DJ Baby D. Okay, thanks for the follow. Can I now finish this story? Damn. What a start. What a powerful start to a, a very powerful stream. Welcome, everybody. Uh, pleasure to have you here. Welcome. Um, here I am. Here I am, the streamer. He's back. Wahoo! I know, speaking of the DJ, it was a pretty, it was a pretty, pretty timely uh, little little notification there. Yeah, this is a, this is a classic. Uh, as I was researching the stuff that I'm going to be showing you this stream, I came across this picture, and it's still one of my favorites. It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. I'm pretty good, Torgor. How are you, man? Welcome. How are all of you on this fine Saturday evening? <laughs> I love how the, the fucking beers are just... This is like the perfect... The perfect representation photo for beer goggles. They're completely in the background, out of focus, and the beers are just perfectly in focus. It's it's just such a beautiful picture. I remember coming across it years ago. I think back in like 2015, and I thought it was so fucking funny. I remember showing Viridium, and we were just laughing about it. It was good shit, man. Pretty good stuff. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, this is going to be quite a stream. This is going to be something a little different than I'm used to. Um, so I've been, especially lately, you, you know, you might have noticed I've been, you know, I've been away for a bit. Uh, I've been pretty busy. I've been working a lot. I've been doing things behind the scenes. It's just been, it, it's been a, a lot of stuff has been going on. I've been actively working on bringing you more snoozy TV content, more cooking streams. Uh, but between work and everything, it's just like I couldn't find the time to also stream and be consistently funny. So I decided to take a break. I'm probably going to be on like a semi hiatus on and off for like the next month or, or so. You'll see me here and there. You just won't see me as often as you used to. Because I, I just... Man, video games suck, okay? Let me tell you something. These video games are not funny. I'm going through all these, like, lists and cues and shit, trying to find stuff that would work on stream. And some of them look interesting. But it's just the same shit. When You know, I was looking at my queue, and I saw that I viewed 17,000 games, almost 18,000. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I've seen the 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 cream of the crop. I've seen also the worst of the worst. And now it's just like I keep coming across the same stuff over and over. Just like people trying to be purposely bad and failing. And then games that look interesting but aren't. And just miss the mark. So, you know, I'm going to try to branch off a little bit. I'm going to do a few different fun things. Maybe some things in real life as well. You got to, you know, you got to diversify. Uh, and hopefully you find it funny. I think you will. Because uh, I'm put, I'm definitely putting more work into it, especially this. Okay, I've spent a couple days researching this stuff. Unfortunately, there wasn't as much material as I wanted there to be. Um, if you don't know, I, I briefly mentioned this. I don't think I even mentioned this on Twitter or anything. But um, okay, so I've been I've been watching a lot of uh, documentaries on exceptional individuals. You know, like like Kiwi Farms type stuff, Mr. Medicare's type stuff. Uh, you know, like Chris Chan's. Uh, just basically lol cows, and I've, I've become fascinated with the with the subject, and uh, I've had a lol cow of my own for, for quite a while now, so I, I'd say for at least 10 years, if not longer. Uh, a person that I know through my lady, um, who is quite exceptional in all the worst ways, uh, and by that I mean she is... <laughs> She thinks she's the fucking greatest artist who ever lived. Um, and she's not being ironic. Like, it, it, I spent a good couple of years trying to figure out if she's just fucking with everybody. And, you know, I'm not going to knock somebody for legitimately putting effort in to a creative pursuit and trying to better themselves and trying to become, you know, just just become better at their crap. There's nothing. Listen, if you're if you're bad at drawing, if you're bad at writing, if you're bad with any creative pursuit and you're actively trying to get yourself out there to get criticism in order to learn from it, in order to grow and to become a better artist, that's totally cool. I am totally in your corner, and I hope you, you get better and you prove everybody wrong. I am so behind you. But then there's the opposite end of the spectrum where your art is bad, you post it, 
you don't improve in 10 years and you expect everybody to, you know, to be your backup and you you purge hate comments that, you know, that kind of cut into you for 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 essentially just per perpetuating the same mistakes that you've made over the years and, you know, not taking criticism and talking shit on people who are better than you or people that criticize. <laughs> Uh, and that's, that's the aspect that I'm fascinated with because I used to, I used to be really into writing. I still jot things down once in a while. Not as, not as often. I just don't have the time anymore. I'd like to get back into it, but I was the opposite end of the spectrum where I refused to believe any compliment that I got. I would scrutinize and I would try to find some sort of negativity that I can get out of the person so that I could get better. That is my problem. Maybe it's perfectionism. I don't know. I'm just so paranoid of people like this, the people that delude themselves into being in, into believing that they're good, that I don't want any semblance of that to be <laughs> in my peripheral whatsoever. Um, so this is a person that I know. I, I, I barely know them personally. I, I know them in passing. I've hung out with them, I think, on one or two occasions. And um, they toot their own horn. They think they're the greatest gift, you know, to the art world. They seriously like the, the way that they phrase uh, posting their art is some fucking cringy shit that I just I can't DJ stomach. Baby D. Okay. Dane, That's thank you so much for the twenty months. Uh, oh, also, thank you to everybody who resubbed. I'm sorry I missed you guys. Um, it was during the the intro. Let's see, Simple Tan, thank you for the nineteen months. Let's see if I could catch all of you here. My wife, thank you for the 20 months. Dr. X Pug, thank you for the six months. Snoochums, thank you for the 19. Smeep, thank you for the 20. And that's it. We're all caught up. At least I think so. I might have missed one. I'm so sorry if I did. Uh, please forgive me. This is, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best here. I'm doing my best over here. Um, but I'm just, <laughs> maybe I should just, okay, let me, let me, let me preface all this. Okay, let me preface all this with an example. So this is what we're going to be going over today. The main event is going to be me reading her book. Um, it's not that long. It is, it is about 300 pages, but it's double spaced at about between 12 and 15 point font on tiny paper. So it's not that, it's not that long, but it's just so hilariously bad. And it makes me mad. I used to try to read it with my girl and seriously, we'd be laughing in bed trying to read it before we went to sleep and we would get through three pages and give up it was that it's that bad um so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to get through as much as possible but i want to do i want to save that um for a little later not at the end of the stream or anything but i want to give you some context i want to give you an idea of what we're getting into here um so i'm going to show you some of her art that is that is really good i, I think you'll really appreciate it i showed some of it a long time ago most of you probably don't remember it. There's probably a, a, just a handful of people who remember what I showed. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of comments that she's made on her own artwork while posting it. Um, <laughs> just so so you could, you know, you could just understand the level of self-importance that this person has. And I'm also, unfortunately, I could not, I, I, I teased this yesterday, I could not find the Phantom of the Opera showering fanfic. Uh, which, you know, if, if any of you have even the, the, the base idea of where the Phantom of the Opera takes place, you'd know that showers were not in existence during that time. But in her mind, they were. So there, there's a showering scene. Um, there's, I think he also gets shot and falls off a cliff and survives. That's also part of it. But I think I, think I might save that for another time. If you guys like this, I will be continuing reading this book and also delving deeper. This will be like a two-parter, okay? Because I do have to... You don't understand the level of content this woman pr produces, okay? I went on her fan fiction. There is one particular story that is 82 chapters with 265,000 words. I shit you not. That is one of them. She has about 20 of them. Most of them are between 20 and 50 chapters, ranging... Anywhere between 50,000 to 200,000 words per book on fanfiction.net, okay? So, I I was way over my head. I looked, okay? I could not fucking find it. But I will I will look some more. I will skim. I wish I had screen grabbed it when I first find, found it. But this was like 10 years ago. Seriously. 
This was a long time ago. But this was like my fucking pastime. <laughs> it's fucking incredible. All of them have to do with Phantom of the Opera. I don't know what her fixation is, but it's it is. It's Phantom of the Opera. Uh, the book we'll be reading today is is not. It is an original, and now I put original in quotes. Maybe I should put myself on screen so you could see. Uh, you know, you could see what I mean here. Let me throw myself up here. Okay. Hello. Hi, streamer here. Uh, original, original content. Uh, that that she created. It's it's gonna be something. <laughs> it's 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 gonna be so. Here, I'll show you it. Okay. Here, first, first, let me click myself off. So this is what we're gonna be reading. Okay. This is the book right here. It's gonna be reversed. Uh, the Escapades of Augie Atwell. As you can see, quality quality artwork here. Some incredible stuff. Um, should be should be a pretty interesting read. Pretty pretty informative. Um, I'm also hopefully going to have my lady who is situated behind me hiding she's going to be drawing some choice scenes probably she's probably going to be drawing some choice scenes from the book to share with you just from her artistic vision she she's uh she's an illustrator um here i'll, I'll show you okay just so you, you know so you know the difference um you know she draws some exceptional people here we've got the albert it's pretty good. Um, these are all people that we have uh, personally spoken to on a, cer on a certain social media platform you may know as Facebook. Um, this is an artist depiction of a gentleman uh, that we met. So, you know, she, she is uh, artistically inclined and she, she, is, she does not toot her own horn, so I'll toot it for her. Um, but she's going to be drawing some choice scenes, some quick, quick scenes from this. Uh, because this is, <laughs> this is our passion. This is, this has been a running joke for like fucking 10 years, maybe longer because we've just been obsessed with this. We love shit like this. We keep coming back. We would keep coming back for like five years to just see what she's up to because she was, it was at the point where she was having full fledged arguments about her book with, with strangers on the internet. It was, it was incredible. The, the shit she would do to defend her, her work. Um, so, I, you know, I, I figured l let's let you in on the joke because I think you could really appreciate it. Um, but let's see, how do we start here? Uh, let me start you off with just an example of how she, <laughs> how she frames, uh, her artwork. Now, let me preface this, okay? This is not a, a bullying stream. This is an appreciation of an exceptional, exceptional writer artist just a creative personality just just somebody who's who's truly something to behold it's all appreciation it's all love there's you know there's no hatred here uh it's all in good fun it's all in jest and uh you know i of course uh expressly instruct this gathering do not pursue this person do not seek this person out uh you will ruin it okay I, most of you, I don't have to tell you this, but just trust me. If you if you have any inkling of how to contact this person, do not, do not. You'll wreck it. Just trust me. You, it won't get the 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 reaction that you want it to. Just observe. This is a zoo, okay? There's there's bars here. View and appreciate. Do not do not interact. You stick your hand into the lines, then it will bite your hand off. Just don't do it. Um, so yeah, absolutely don't do that. Let's just appreciate this together. Let's have a good time. Um, so yeah, let me, let me now frame for you now. This is a piece of artwork. Um, oh, hold on one second. Cause I got to turn this off. Otherwise alerts will come up twice. Okay, here we go. So this is a little piece of artwork. Um, you know, very, <laughs> very nice. I'm not sure who this is supposed to be. I think this is supposed to be, um, fuck. Who is this supposed to be? I think this is supposed to be someone from the Gotham TV series, I think the Penguin. I don't know the the Riddler. I don't fucking know. I don't watch it. Okay, I have no I have no idea. I'm gonna assume <laughs> that's gonna be my assumption. Uh, so I'm gonna just read. You know, I omitted what she wrote. I'm just gonna read it to you because I don't want you to, to see your name. I don't want you to you know to to bother this person. Uh, so I'm just gonna read the way she framed this this piece of art, which is honestly spectacular. I mean, you know, pour your reviews in here if you'd like. 
Uh, beautiful weather, and I spent the afternoon with a paintbrush in my shades practicing my people painting skills in the beautiful sunshine. I have to say, I'm really getting good at it. Uh, so that's a little taste. <laughs> it's a little taste of, uh, <laughs> of how, uh, she views herself. So, you know, these are people painting skills. Now, I can't paint at all. I have no, no artistic hand. Um... But yeah, you know, it's it's something. It's 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 pretty good. It's a little skew, but you know, who who am I to to criticize? Um, but the problem is, here's here's the biggest problem with with what she makes is she traces off of other people's work. So there's, I could tell that she probably because I know her art style. I can tell she probably made most of this. But the problem is, she goes on DeviantArt, she traces over other people's work, and then she claims that it's her own as well. And She's been getting better at it. My my woman called her out a couple times, and she started to delete that sort of stuff. But it's it's entirely possible that she still does it. I don't know. I haven't kept up. Um, so here's one. Uh, here's another. You know, if you if you think this is pretty good, <laughs> let me let me show you the opposite end of the spectrum. Okay. Uh, this is Andy Warhol on some eggs with Campbell's tomato soup. I don't know what the fuck that has to do with anything. At least I think it's, is that an egg? I think it's an egg. Um, all right, let's see here. As many people know, I love Andy Warhol. Always have, always will. Next weekend, I'm finally going to get the chance to visit his grave site. I wanted to do something special for him, so I painted a river, oh, it's a rock, okay. I, I painted a river rock to place on his grave. Absolutely love how it came out. Here's hoping no one steals it off the grave. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna be stealing it off the grave. It, it just, it's, you know, I'm just being honest with you. I, I, I think you're safe in uh, assuming that this will stay with his grave for a while. Or perhaps, you know, instead of stealing, perhaps some of the the, the staff around the grave will, will say, what is this abomination defacing? Has someone defaced this grave? Let's Let's toss it in the river. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, what the fuck is the Campbell soup thing? Uh, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know much about Andy Warhol. Maybe that's an Andy Warhol thing. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm just fixated on Cam Campbell's tomato soup. <laughs> so, you know, guys, do not go to Andy Warhol's gravesite and steal this beautiful piece of art as much as you want it. And I know you do. Uh, please have respect for the dead. Respect the dead. That's all I ask. Um, that's all I ask you to do. I think it's pretty simple. Um... Uh, so yeah, that's that, that's just a little look at how she views herself. Um, uh, would you guys like to see more art, or would you like me... What, what else we can do is we can go through... Now, I'm not going to read her fanfiction. There's just too much. We'll save that for another day. But I thought it would be interesting to read her reviews, because people like to correct her grammar. She, she does not have good grammar. Uh, she does not have good punctuation. She was in remedial English. Not to knock anybody who's been in re remedial English. I was in remedial English because I slept in class. But I can write. <laughs> so I can't, you know, I'm not I'm not going to knock you for being in there. But she she has no business uh, writing if she, if she can't grasp basic grammar. And also there's grammatical and pun punctuation errors in her books too. So it's pretty good. But, you know, Amazon allows that as long as you pay for, for the binding. Uh, but I thought it would be pretty fun to look through the reviews just to see what people uh, said. Um, or we could look at our art. So it's your it's your choice. Uh, let me let me see what you're interested in here. Meanwhile, I will I'm gonna skim through this. Oh my lord, there's so many comments. There's 116 pages of comments on this one. This one that has oh my lord almighty. There's so fucking much. So fucking much, man. But I guess that's what happens when you have like 80 chapters of a book. Of, of a book. Okay. Oh, man. You want reviews? Yeah, you know, I have to I have to listen to Kendo Kes. I have no choice. Let's let's go with Kendo's uh, recommendation here. I'm going to throw th I'm going to put myself off screen. Hopefully you can see this, okay? Let me just make sure. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. Let me know if you have any trouble reading any of this. Um but uh yeah, so let's let's go through this. <laughs> the first speaking of grammar, the first fucking thing that comes up, grammar. Please learn it. I'm sorry, but this could be so much better if you corrected everything. Hope you get a beta. This can be so much more if people can actually read it. Uh, 
Christine should not have did that because she is making Eric very mad at her and should make Eric take that test to see if he is the father. Take that test! It's the 18 fucking hundreds! They don't have pregnancy tests in the 1800s! hundreds. i am gonna have to read this one. There's a pregnancy test in the Phantom of the Opera. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Fantastic, wonderful story to read. Thank you for writing a long story. Amazing, keep writing. Most of them are, are just, you know... Some dick sucking uh, comments, and that's fine, you know, if you're a fan. But it's it's pretty incredible. This wasn't as good as I had hoped, but a fine way to pass the time. A fine way to pass the time. The only thing I wasn't uh, too big on was Eric's crying. Uh, I don't think he would cry all the time. <laughs> uh, Christine was a little bit of a slut. I think you should tone down on the sex a little bit. You wrote it more. M then T? What the f- oh, 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 like M rating. So there's a lot of sex in this, apparently. I hope the sequel is better. So there's a lot of fucking in this, and also there's a pregnancy test. Oh, yeah, they definitely had less reliable ones. Uh, you know, doctor would stick his finger in, see if they poke around. Yep, there's a baby in here. That's the pregnancy test. It's pretty good, man. Uh, let's see. I tried to read your story. Okay, okay, here we go. This is a good one, because this, this person just typed up a little bit. I tried to read your story, but I found that I couldn't. I simply can't understand who says what and when I do. It takes too much time and effort to keep on reading. Uh, I mean, look at the text. Huge blocks of it, and then th these blocks have full conversations in them. This looks like a good story, but I'm really sorry. I just can't read it. It takes too much time to decipher the dialogues. If you don't put capital letters at the beginning of a new sentence, I won't know it is a new sentence. I will just think it's a continuation of the previous sentence. Uh, a little bit of advice. Look at any other good written story and look closely at the dialogue. Every time someone new speaks, they automatically get a new paragraph. Example. All right, then he gives examples. Is it tiring? Where be where where begins a new sentence? Did you know right away, or did you have to read till the end of it to know who said it? And please cut down the said Christine. I counted, and you put this very same basic said Christine five times in one paragraph, as if she was some automaton and did not uh, did nothing else but kept on saying something in a boring monotone. Give her a little more soul, okay? If you ever do something about this, please let me know. I would like to read your story in its final version. So this is nice. This is like some constructive criticism. Um, it's not a terrible thing. Uh, you know, this person's legitimately trying to fucking fucking help. But she doesn't like this either. I, I've seen her lambast people. I, 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 don't, I don't think there's a way to check if she replied, unfortunately. I think there used to be. But I'm not really sure how it works on here anymore. Oh, man. It's true. If, if, if you're not willing to spend, spend the time with a piece of paper and pen trying to find out who said what, then why are you reading the book to begin with? I like your story a little. Oh, man. I would like to give you some suggestions. There is dialogue. You in, you indent and start on a new line. You make your conversations in paragraphs that are sometimes hard to follow. So this is a recurring theme. And I'm pretty sure that she has this problem in, her, in the story we're going to be covering today. Uh, but my god, there's just there, there's a lot of information here. Oh man. I'm just trying to skim through here and see if there's anything interesting. Will you please stop making your story so depressing and make it... Oh, that's another recurring theme. She likes sadness a lot. I think she's projecting her own... Uh, let's see. Eric's so beautiful, and Clorinda is such a cute child. <laughs> this is her audience. Um, your spelling is a little stiff at places. Good job. That was a really good chapter. This is the problem with fanfiction.net. Like, you can't... I, I wish that you could just see the responses to specific chapters rather than one big discussion forum for the entire thing when people are replying to specific chapters because it would be a lot easier to follow. But hey, what can you do? Don't bash Raul too badly. I like it so far. There's someone that just keeps coming back. I'm now addicted to this story. Oh, boy. Your numerous punctuation errors already say that you're not the sharpest crayon in the box. Why would Raul want to go to England anyway? All of his family and friends are presumably in France. A weak plot point is weak. <laughs> I ned another chapter. Great story so far. Oh, that's pretty good, dude. 
I know, Bloodsucker just loves this shit. Like she's the, she's her biggest fan. It's 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 wonderful to have fans, isn't it? Uh, I absolutely love this story and can't wait to see the rest. Girl, I hate you, Raul, and I'm so mad that you left us at a cliff cliffhanger. Wah! You little warrior. Wah! Pretty good. Let's see here. Wow, Christine sure is an idiot. All right, so this is just all things relating to the actual book that I, I have no idea about. I haven't I haven't read through this, but um, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, let me <laughs> let me show you some of her art. Now I'm gonna click myself off here. Uh, so you could fully appreciate this art. Um, let's see. Uh, I've... <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to start off by showing you art from this actual book. She 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 printed it in the book in black and white. So, I'm, you know, there's pictures. It's a picture book, partially. So I'll be showing you that as we go along. Uh, but I did label some of these so I could rem kind of vaguely remember what they are. And... Uh, all right, so this one I labeled dolls and books. So she created, she she sewed together a doll and some bookmarks. She made some bookmarks for the release of her books. Uh, but she didn't sell them. It was just, you know, it stroke her own ego. So there you go. I don't know. Can you see that well? Uh, it's pretty good. It's not that bad. It, I mean, compared to her artwork, this is kind of a step up. But she also made, like, wrapping paper. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, the font is fantastic. Let me tell you something. Creepy font in, in a fucking book always works. A plus. A plus. Yeah, doll's not that bad. Uh, but now I'm going to pull the rug out from under you, and I'm going to show you Baby. I don't know where this fits in in the book. I haven't gotten that far, but here's Baby. Don't know what this has to do with the story. But it's Baby. Okay? So there's Baby. Uh, this one's called Telescope. It shows uh, Prince Zuko from uh, Avatar The Last Airbender along with female cosplay Indiana Jones. Uh, and he's holding a bent telescope. And also, I'd like you... Okay, I'd like you to now focus on the scar he has on his face, okay? Because I'm going to, I'm going to ruin this scar forever for you and you're never going to see anything again uh, when another image comes up. So focus on that scar. Keep that in mind. I'm going to show you something in a, in a moment. Uh, okay, so here's, this one's called Harry Potter Abu, and as you can see, we have Indiana Jones cosplay Harry Potter, uh, with frames that are mismatched, and we've got Abu from Aladdin, also holding a telescope. This is, um, this is a recurring theme, and also, this is not a monkey, this is a lemur. Have you guys ever seen a lemur who looks like this? Also, he has the vest. Almost Harry Potter, it really is. <laughs> it is almost Harry Potter. He's, he's a fucking perfect gentleman. You know what he looks like? He kind of looks like Linkara. He kind of looks like Linkara. Looks like Linkara cosplaying as Harry Potter slash Indiana Jones with uh, Abu from Aladdin on his shoulder. Hobo Potter. Uh, here, this one's called Neopet. I'm, I've just named these. This is not what she's named them. I have no idea where this comes from, but this is a Neopet. What else can it be? Okay. I don't know how this happens in the story. It's a Neopet. Uh, take good care of it. I call this one Pineapple. Um, we've got the, uh, a chick from Avatar with a reverse pineapple ensemble. Looking very, very nice. And then we've got uh, Prince Zuko again down here. She has this thing with scars, with scarred men, I guess because of uh, Phantom of the Opera. Um, but I want you to focus on the scar now because I'm going to bring you right back to what I said. I want you to focus on the scar and try to get the image of your mind of a demon with his giant dick out. Um, just take a look at that. You'll see it. He's got two little legs. He's got a big old dick. He's got horns at the top. And now you will forever see the demon dick scar. When you look at this man, you will never see anything else. And I'd like to say you're very welcome. Because that's all I see now. Ever since I brought it up ten years ago. So we've got, you know, we got demon dick scar pretty good i don't know what he's grabbing he's like grabbing her elbows i think or he's like tickling her tummy i don't know yeah the dick is in his mouth it is <laughs> it goes right to his lips oh shit he's just sucking demon cock right on the right in this image it's so lewd 
Okay, this one I accidentally named Indian Jones, even though I meant to put Indiana. But he's, you know, he's posing very sexily. He's got some sort of chameleon down there. It looks like a... It looks like it's flavored... It's a mystery, a mystery flavored airhead just lying there. But he's posed very nice. Um, his he, He's wearing like a, a Texas Ranger uh, cap. His glasses are still bent. I don't know what's going on with those glasses. Peppermint lizard. Yeah, give him a lick. It's, it tastes delicious. Yeah, but we got Indian Jones here. Uh, this next one's just called Doll. I don't know what this one is. Oh yeah, this is the Doll close-up. So you can see the quality kind of deteriorates a little bit. Um, the hair definitely doesn't match. I don't know why he has hair like Saeed from Lost. Or why his beard is a different color. But it's fine, you know. It's felt. She did what she could. Um, <laughs> this... <laughs> so now we're stepping a little bit away from the artwork for this book. And now I'm going to show you some artwork that she just put... On her deviant art or just put on her uh, page this one is called rape and it, it's pretty self-explanatory i don't know how you could view this as anything else don't know what what was meant to be shown here but i call it rape what else could this be no she didn't give this title i'm giving it this title i don't know what she called this but come on like this <laughs> This is what I call it. I don't know what she calls these things. I think I think she was trying to make like a, a Phantom of the Opera, like a kid Phantom of the Opera book. I don't know, man. I don't know who this girl's supposed to be, but I call it rape. Here's a little Phantom. You know, it's adorable. It's pretty good. Is it, isn't the mask supposed to be on half his face, not his entire face? Or am I remembering that incorrectly? Yeah, you could just, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, here, she was making a guinea pig book. She has this fixation with um, using those templates in Photoshop that kind of surround it like a border. You can see it on her, on the title of her of her book as well. It's the same exact thing. You see those like little swirls. You could kind of notice them. Uh, it's not. Hold on. Let me let me show you up close here. Okay. You see those swirls around? She just likes it. I don't know. I don't know why. It's her favorite. Um, let's see what else we have here. We got Relax and Fanny. She had a little Phantom of the Opera doll. Also, she compiled all her fan fiction into a book that you could purchase. Um, which I, I don't know. Is that legal? Doesn't someone own the, the rights to Phantom of the Opera and she's essentially aping off of it and, and selling it for $10? Is, is that allowed? I don't... It doesn't sound like it's allowed, but she does it. Um, here's another fanny. Uh, here, this one I call Freddy. It just looks like Freddie Mercury as the Phantom of the Opera. Um, this one I call Titanic. <laughs> what is going on here? Why does she look like she has dentures? Uh, welcome, Mousepad. I don't know what happened here, but they are on the Titanic. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Liz. I, I thought maybe, you know, it was it was public domain now. But I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I want to write my own fan fiction for... Um, I want to write and sell uh, Sonic the Hedgehog fan fiction. And, and tell Nintendo to suck it. Uh, here's <laughs> this one I called <laughs> Phantom Got a Perm. Or Phantom Brain. Again, like, I don't know what is with the full mask. I thought only half his face was was damaged. But man, she's got a strong-ass chin. This 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 woman is a bodybuilder. She's very powerful. Uh, and also, he's got, like, some raccoon eye makeup going on. Which is very prevalent in, in, in those days, I'm sure. This one I just called what? I don't know what's going on here. I have no idea. Uh, make your guesses, and they're probably right. <laughs> Alright, this one's gonna make me sound like a terrible person, but this is how I've seen it ever since I first came across this image. This is, I call this, Man Reads to Down Syndrome Child. I don't even know where to begin. 
I don't know why he's making that face. Look with your heart. Also, he seems to have pissed all over his music notes. But that's fine. And also his mouth's missing. But let's not pay attention to <laughs> to such things when there's a child who's had a stroke right in front of us. This one I call Bioshock. <laughs> Cause it just looks like a like a fucking splicer. Why is everyone bald? Why does she have a fixation with bald? This guy has no hair and this this woman is dancing in front of this man's grave. I'm assuming this is an open casket. He, he might just be going to sleep, but it looks like an open casket funeral. And she's just dancing with him in front of his grave. The moments creep, yet I can... I can't bear to sleep till I hear you sing. And weeks pass, and months pass, seasons fly, still you don't walk through my door. Is that from Phantom of the Opera? I don't, know if, I don't even know. Uh, this one's called Child Eating Door. As you can see, little Jimmy has uh, taken little bites of the, the molding here. Um, not the smartest child, I'd say. That's probably why he has the striped pajamas. He's in a he's in a camp. He's he's a uh, he's a recurring felon for biting doors. Uh, this one I call Billy Crystal. It just looks like Billy Crystal. I don't know what else to say. It looks like Billy Crystal with a weird vest. There he is, everyone's favorite comedian. I think she does use crayons. She either uses crayons or colored pencils. I don't remember. This this looks like um like pastel, like really cheap pastel. But I'm not exactly sure what her medium is. But there you have it. That's um you know, that's a little look at her artwork. I think it's pretty good. You know, I can't I can't uh, I can't comment with negativity. I I can't hate on on the on the struggle of a of an artist, it does look like pastel, right? But it's got to be cheap pastel because pastel is not run like that. It does not. It doesn't look that bad, okay? Don't look that bad. Oh man. Hey, thank you so much. I'm a big fan of this shirt. All right, so now we come to the main event, okay? We're gonna read the book just to give you some idea. Of what the text looks like, it's not that much, but we are going to be struggling. Trust me, I'm just going to be laughing at this shit. It's really, really bad. Um, I was, I was thinking about doing like different voices for the characters, but I don't think I'm going to be able to remember them because it's just, it's just going to make me so mad. This book makes me really fucking mad because she's been, she doesn't anymore, but she, she was just like hawking it to fucking everybody she went to like she said that it was at barnes and noble she went to barnes and noble she got like three copies of her book and she like took down books from a shelf and put her books there and took a picture and she's like finally in uh, finally in the storefront and then she she got some local bookshop to take pity on her and actually put the the books there she took pictures there she did interviews with like local people that nobody knows i got like 100 views she's been she she thinks she's on the fuck well she did she she thought she was on the come up she doesn't do this as much anymore she sh she still like shills uh cakes that she's made and other like weird things but not so much the the books anymore i think it finally got to her when you know when the reviews rolled in <laughs> it finally came through um but i'm going to give you one one caveat here this is a little jim beam apple it's pretty good i knew i'd need alcohol for this uh, or actually, hey, Twitch, uh, this is iced tea. I've refilled this alcoholic beverage with iced tea. This is non-alcoholic. This is Snapple. Hey, audience, this is S Snapple, okay? Uh, what we're going to do, she has a thing for semicolons, for putting them everywhere. I don't know why. She probably learned about semicolons, and she's like, I'll put these everywhere. This will make you look like a professor, professional writer. So, I'm going to take half a shot every time I see a semicolon. I would have done a full shot, but trust me, there's a lot of semicolons in this, and I don't want to die uh, of alcohol poisoning. All right? All right? She puts them fucking everywhere, man. She loves her semicolons. Uh <laughs> The fucking creepy font is is next fucking level. I I just don't know. And also, 
This is the first page, okay? First, I'm trying to get this in the frame. You're supposed to leave a page blank. You just put the fucking thing right there. What if someone, what if someone gets it damaged? And also here we have Abu with this telescope. I mean, come on, dude. That's Abu from Aladdin. He's on a magic carpet. He's on a magic carpet. That's Abu. All right. This book is dedicated to my family, friends, and Jenny. Uh, I'm sure Jenny really appreciates that. All right. Now we have some blank pages. I don't know. We have this after the, the list of chapters. There's just two blank pages. Oh, boy. You, you guys have no idea how, how, how much this hurts. But, you know, let's suffer together here. Let, let's, all, let's all enjoy this together as a family. Okay. Um, should I? I guess I should just have myself here. Let me make myself a little bigger. You can, you can, look, you can look at me. All right. Uh, look into my eyes. I want to find some artwork. Maybe I'll put that uh, that uh, pineapple one. I really like that pineapple one. That's one of my favorites. Where's pineapple? There's pineapple. One second. We'll get pineapple in the frame here. There's pineapple. Put him in frame. Put myself here. There you go. You got a nice little, nice little combo here. You got me. You got pineapple. How do you like that shit, huh? It's pretty good, isn't it? All right. Thank you so much, Jenny. Jenny, Jenny, this is for you. I don't know who you are, but all right. So here we go. Let's let's start reading. I have uh, plenty of water. I've got alcohol, alcohol, hold on, Al iced tea for uh, semicolons, and I've got a wonderful book that I'm going to read with you and for you. Okay, please please enjoy. All right. So this is the prologue called "The Village of." Rumble Twaza, uh, R U M B L E T W O Z A. It could be Rumble Tuza, it could be Rumble Twaza. I call it Rumble Twaza because it sounds more retarded. Uh, past the grassy savannas of Africa, over the border of Mexico, and through the crystal clear waters of Bermuda, sits the small village of Rumble Twaza. I know that you're all saying, Rumble Twaza? There is no such place on earth called Rumble Twaza. I know this because I once thought the very same thing. The village of Rumble Twaza is real, semicolon. See? Already. Already there's a fucking semicolon. Already we've got it. Alright? First one of the night. First semicolon, babe. It's it's real iced iced tea. Here iced tea. Okay. Rumble Twaza. As real as the Great White Sharks. And by the way, Great White Sharks is capitalized. It sounds like a fucking a fucking sports team. <laughs> Who are you gonna see? The Great White Sharks. Uh, <laughs> that swim in the Pacific Ocean are as real as you and me. Yes. The village of Rumble Twaza does exist, even though you cannot see it on any kind of geographical map. Rumble Twaza is home to the Rumble Twazian. Rumble Twazian? I don't fucking know. Could you could you have come up with a worse fucking name for a people? I would I would commit fucking Harry Curie if I it was a Rumble Twajin. Uh Rumble Twajin tribe. Colon. Colon. It's not a semicolon. Doesn't count. Colon. A group of settlers who founded Rumble Twaza thousands and thousands of years ago. So this fucking predates current history. <laughs> Modern history. Jesus Christ. Uh <laughs> Jesus Christ came after Rumble Twaza came about. Uh, <laughs> the Rumble Tajans were once slaves of rich. Oh damn, this is this this runs deep. Slaves of rich farmers that owned land over in Australia. It thousands of years ago in Australia. Farmers, farmers in Australia thousands of years ago. Uh, every day they endured cruel punishments that included being tossed into mud holes for working too slow or being whipped for sleeping in late. So why call yourself the Rumble Twajans, you may ask? Well, thousands and thousands of years ago, if you haven't heard, uh, a young slave <laughs> named Tumble Rumble Twaza became sick and tired of the farmer's ways uh, and thought up a plan to take all of the slaves away from such harsh, harsh cruelties. So one evening, he got together with his brothers, Rumble, you're going to notice a theme here, there's a lot of rhyming names, 
I don't know why. Maybe she thought, you know, you'll you'll remember them more if if they rhyme. Uh, Rumble, Stumble, and Mumble Rumble Twaza. So I, I assume all their last names are Rumble Twaza, which is fucking re- so fucking retarded. It's like my last name is Poland. Uh, and gathered up all the other slaves to get this is this is not, this is a story about slavery. Together, <laughs> together they ran for the mayor's ship. And climbed, a mayor, thousands and thousands of years ago, climbed aboard with Tumble leading the way. He steered the vessel as far away from Australia as possible. Man, Australia sucks. Vowing never to be enslaved again, Tumble's troubles were just beginning because as soon as they hit the middle of the sea, the worst storm in history swooped up the ship and crushed it to pieces, causing all the slaves to be engulfed in the waves. Once the storm ended, the sun had come out, and the settling waves washed everyone to shore. When Tumble op- opened his eyes, a beautiful island appeared before him, semicolon. Oh, boy. I vow never to be enslaved again by fucking Australians. Mmm. I know, right? It's pretty pretty lucky. They Not only did they escape Australia, but they also survived the worst storm ever 2,000 years ago. Well, several thousand years ago. We don't know if it's 2,000. Um, let's see here. I gotta find that semicolon. An island fully sheltered by the treetops to protect them from the mud caused by the rain. How the fuck does that protect you from mud? What? You can still go through the leaves? Um, an island rich in natural resources like fruits and grains. Those are natural resources. An island just waiting to be called home. Tumul thought that the storm had led them to the island... And that it was a sign from the heavens above. Also, I'll note, I'll I'll tell you that she loves using the dot dot dot. She's used it twice already. I don't think that's a sign of a good writer. <laughs> the f- f- fucking triple period. Since Tumble was the one who has saved everyone from a life of slavery, the island was named after him. So for thousands of years, the Wormble Twajans have lived happily with their families, free from a life of slavery. Now, I bet you're all wondering why I'm going on about a place called Rumble Twaza. Well, I'll get to that eventually, dot, dot, dot. But for now, our journey does not begin in the happy place of Rumble Twaza, semicolon. Holy fucking shit, dude. I'm going to be dead by the end of this. Another fucking semicolon. This is the prologue. This is the prologue that is three pages long. Mm. Three pages long. Three semicolons already. Uh, our journey does not begin, uh, it begins in Sydney, Australia, also known as The Land Down Under. Alright, so that's the prologue. Uh, what are your thoughts on the prologue so far? You guys in- invested in the Rumble Twajans? You know, this is the story of slavery. It's pretty good, man. Oh, man. Yeah, just, just forget about Rumble, you know, why are you talking about it? Well, it doesn't matter, we're going to Australia. We're going to Australia now. It's time. <laughs> They're fucking natural resources. They've got all sorts of natural resources. Fruits, grain. That's it. That's all they've got. Natural resources of fruits and grain. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So now we get to the real story. And I'm going to introduce you to the most unlikable fucking character in all of reading. She could not have made a worse protagonist. You fucking hate this guy from the get-go. This guy sucks. He's a mope. He's a fucking depressing, uh, scum-sucking, unhappy motherfucker. You never want to meet somebody like this, okay? He complains about fucking everything. He hates animals. (laughs) He sucks. And I think, uh, subconsciously, she wrote herself into this book and every negative aspect of herself. I, I don't think she realized it, but she is not a likable person just because she she just toots her own horn so much. All right. So this is chapter one. Meet Augie Atwell. Also a very good name. Much better than Rumble Twaza. Uh, now it's from the in the first person. Okay. Uh, my alarm clock rang out at 8 a.m. as it did every morning, causing me to reach over to my nightstand and fumble around to shut it off. Afterwards, I walked over to... This is like a laundry list already. <laughs> this, is like, this is like somebody with OCD planning out their day. 
Oh, first thing I did, I uh, grabbed my alarm clock. Second thing I did, I got up out of the bed and I walked uh, straight towards uh, the, the kitchen. I made a left into the bedroom. Then I made a right into the kitchen. Why the fuck do I have to see every fucking thing you do? Do I have to know which leg goes first as well? Jesus. Uh, afterwards, I walked over to the window and yanked open the old rustic shutters to let in the humid air that Australia always... Loved. Why would you want humid air to come into your house? Wouldn't you want to keep that out? <laughs> come in, humid air! Make me sweat! I fucking love it! Uh, I have lived in the room 3,000... Oh my lord, I forgot about this. 3,650 days, which is 120 months, equaling to 10 years to the day. Who fucking cares? Why do I care how many days it's been? Say fucking 10 years. I don't remember the reason why I chose to live in this room, semicolon. It's gonna be, I, I, I'm banking on 10 semicolons in this chapter. I already know it's coming. I, ha I have an idea. There were three in the prologue. That was three pages. This shit's at least 10 pages. Gotta be 10 semicolons. At least. Oh, man. It's small, stuffy, smells funny, and others would find it quite depressing. Then fucking spruce it up, dude. My life isn't very exciting either, which is exactly the way I like it. <laughs> I don't like an exciting life! My, my, my house smells. My, my place is depressing. It's just the way I like it. I guess... <laughs> Uh, I guess if you haven't figured it out by now, I am what others would call- <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> you hate this shit, too. And she's already sketching scenes from this. <laughs> she, she fucking hates this book as much as I do. We, we, we struggled with this thing. We, we couldn't get through three pages of this shit. It's such shit. <laughs> it's such shit. Okay. Whoo! God, let me get a sip of water. Let me get my composure back here. Oh, I know I'm gonna be bouncing off the walls from all this delicious iced tea and a Jim Beam bottle. I'm gonna I'm gonna feel great. Oh man. Okay. I guess if you haven't figured it out by now, this is another thing. She like chastises you for not understanding things that aren't obvious. Um, I am what others would call a uh, pantophobic, meaning that I'm afraid of mostly everything. What a fucking exciting human being that you would want in a, as a protagonist in a book. I'm afraid of everything. I'm depressing. My house sucks and it smells. I'm the protagonist of your novel. Ever since I was a child, I knew that I was different from everyone else. I knew I never knew my parents, and so I grew up in a foster home with every other parentless child. <laughs> I think she's confusing a foster home with an orphanage. I don't think you live with a bunch of children in a foster home. <laughs> uh, all these, all these parentless children. Uh, let's see. Come to think of it, no one knew about my parents, and that's italicized, so you know that's important. My foster mother once told me that I had been placed on her doorstep as an infant on a dark, rainy night. So, you know, responsible mom. Oh, it's, you know, I could wait until tomorrow. You know, forecast says it's sunny tomorrow. I gotta get rid of this baby. It's raining? Ah, it'll be alright. Let's, let's just put it on the doorstep. Let's just, I gotta get rid of this kid. This kid's gonna suck. This kid's gonna have a smelly house in the future. Therefore, I did what any other parentless child would do, moved on and forgot all about it. That's, that's what parentless child, children do. You know, that's, you know, people who get, who have divorced parents, they just, just, they just forget all about it. They never have a problem. Anyone without any parents, you know, they never think about them again. It just doesn't happen, statistically speaking. Growing up in the land down under, in quotes, and italicized, meant exciting adventures full of wrestling crocodiles on the playgrounds... Or climbing trees with koala bears, dot, dot, dot. Right? Wrong! While all the other children were out getting into any kind of trouble they could think of, uh, I was the one who stayed inside, afraid to even step foot in the woods. He just did well to having no, tr no parents. Just like everyone else, they just forget about him. I know what you're thinking. Did that not another- stop fucking assuming what I'm thinking! <laughs> Stop telling me what I'm thinking. Let me come to my own conclusions. The story's just started. Uh, this man grew up in the land full of adventure and he sits inside? Well, let me tell you, koala bears scare me and crocodiles? Come on. I would never dream of 
even standing near one. Therefore, I grew up, graduated school, got a safe job working as a sales clerk at McGee Opportunity, colon, the local paper company. That should have been a semicolon. I could have taken a swig after that one. And moved into the small room that I'm standing in now. Each day, I have a certain routine that I never, ever break, no matter what. I wake up at 8. <laughs> Don't tell me again. Shower by 8.10. That's a quick shower. Eight, eat a healthy breakfast that consisted of oatmeal and orange juice by 8.30. Uh, and by 9, I'm out the door to walk to work. I don't drive, semicolon. I love learning about people's routines. Guys, share share with me your routines in chat. Your daily routines and map them out. I want to know every step. Every single step. Fucking Christ. Isn't this interesting? Isn't this a fun book? <laughs> uh, let's see. Once again, you must remember that I am afraid of everything, including driving. It's it's kind of incredible. You know, this, this character has come so far being afraid from everything, but he can work. He has no problem with working or walking down the street. Uh, but he's afraid of everything. This routine has kept me sane my entire life, and I vowed to never break it. After showering, I glanced down at my silver watch that I had on my left wrist. He took it to the to the bath. Good, good. It was only 8.20, and I still had some time to spare. As I dressed myself in my white shirt and tie, I picked up the name tag that spelled out Augie Atwell and pinned it to my shirt. Every day as I pin this piece of flimsy plastic to my, to my shirt, I can't help but wonder why my parents gave me this horrible, annoying name. They could have chosen a normal name, such as Jake or Michael, but no! And it also has five O's. They named me Augie. I know that I'm not the most handsome man in Sydney, but my but my shaggy brown hair and scruffy, unshaven face makes uh, me look more like a Daniel. Okay. Then again, when I look into my blue, <laughs> into my own blue eyes, I could see myself being named Bobby. Dot, dot, dot. But no, with five O's. I was Augie. Augie Amos Atwell. Triple A, baby. Great company. Is the author Australian? No, no, no. She's she's a, a resident Pennsylvanian. <laughs> a resident American. I don't know what the fixation with Australia is at all. I have no idea. After fetching the newspaper from the front door as I did every morning, I sat down at my kitchen table to eat my breakfast and read the daily headline before walking to work. The day's headline read, Another Museum Robbery. It seemed that more and more every day, museums were the places being robbed. Uh, why anyone wanted to rob a place of old, dusty artifacts is beyond me, but I guess most people would give their left arm for a skull belonging to saber-toothed... I, I think she spelled saber wrong. Isn't it S-A-B-R-E? It's S-A-B-E-R here. Toothed tiger. And also, saber-tooth is capitalized, but tiger isn't. Uh, or a silly painting from some someone such as Picasso. I, for one, think that wanting something that badly is just foolish and a waste of space in someone's apartment. Every morning, or each morning, after locking my door and checking it twice... <laughs> sounds like fucking Santa Claus. I, <laughs> I walk my way down a dimly lit hallway that is decorated in the most despicable... This is my... This is my favorite part of this book. Me, me and her have talked about this for years, okay? Are you ready for the best, uh, the best description of a wallpaper? I walk my way down a dimly lit hallway that is decorated in the most despicable wallpaper that I have ever seen. The bright color of lime green with white stripes draped every wall through the long hallway, usually giving me a headache before I can even reach the lobby door. It seemed as though the complex hired a bunch of circus clowns to decorate the perimeter like a funhouse. Not only were the walls just despicable, but the pictures... She said despicable twice. But the pictures hanging on them were the weirdest of things, semicolon. Th this wallpaper will be mentioned again. This wallpaper is the fucking highlight of this entire scene. She she's gonna... I think she mentions it at least two more times. Could be wrong, though. This wall, this author hates wallpaper. Ugh. I, I, she just puts a lot of semicolons. Every she loves semicolons. I don't know why. I, she uses them wrong. <laughs> she just put a period or or something. No, she loves them. That makes her a writer. Makes her a real writer. 
where did I leave off here? Where is the semicolon? Strange looking birds, a black cloudless sky. So it's just black. It's just black. It's just a, a, a fucking canvas with black on it. With the color black. That's the that's the painting. <laughs> with some dots. And a purple field with deer running through its pasture. Why is that a weird drawing? Like why is there that why is that a weird painting? Strange looking birds, fine. Because you already said they were strange. But a purple field with deer running through its pasture sounds like, you know, the status quo of a fucking apartment complex. Uh, for three, th oh my god, she, she tells you again how long she's been li living here. For 3,650 days, I've passed these same pictures, always wanting to ask the manager why. Why had these pictures been chosen to decorate these walls? Let me give you an answer why. Because they were cheap at the fucking store, okay? At the co-op. You just found them. You found them at the swap meet. Hey, how much are these pictures? A dollar? I have an apartment complex that, that needs them. I'll put them up. Uh, was it done as a joke or did someone actually like these images? Why couldn't someone else's walls be disgraced with such hard artwork? Walking to work is always a different story, of course, because once I exit the lobby, I enter what is known as rush, rush hour. If, if you know what that is, guys, uh, might be difficult for you to understand. I, 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 I enter what's called rush hour. And there are quotes. There are quotes and uh, it's italicized. You guys know what rush hour is? Because she'll tell you. Uh, or maybe she won't. If the heat from the city alone wasn't enough for you to want to turn back, the crowds of people would... Walking? Is Sydney, Australia that fucking popular? Is it like Times Square? Come on, man. Come on. No, no I take half a shot, baby. I I've already taken like six. And we're not even past the first chapter yet. Uh, I, I just don't think there's mobs of fucking people. She says there's mobs. Uh, if the heat of the city wasn't alone enough enough for you to want to turn back, the crowds of people would. As I tried to push my way past the mobs of people who, mind you, are also trying to get to work. I be Why are you pushing past them? Just walk with them. Fuck me. Uh, I begin to get even hotter. Why must I wear a tie and a shirt to a job that is located in one of the hottest... How does a tie make you sweaty? <laughs> but how does it make you sweaty? I guess for laughs. After fighting to get through the sweltering streets, I finally make it to my destination. A tall building holding about a hundred floors with a broken elevator. Because that would pass code. Unfortunately, my floor had to be the one hundredth one. Of course it does. Because you're miserable. And after numerous complaints as to when the elevator would be fixed, I still found myself walking up those numerous staircases to reach my desk. My job is pretty boring, colon. Processing papers that have been sent in from different companies. It's nothing special, though it keeps the food on the table and a roof over my head. And most of all, it keeps me safe. I once had a friend named Ronnie Mendez who wanted to fly airplanes. <laughs> who wanted to fly airplanes for a living. It sounds like it's the fucking 1900s and he knows one of the Wright brothers. And he's like, I once had a friend who kept talking about making these flying machines. Oh, what a stupid idea. Uh, who kept talking? Like, just the language is weird. It's just weird to be. Uh, who wanted to fly airplanes for a living and fulfilled his dreams after being hired as a pilot. He always called me a fool for not being more adventurous. And after he died... Oh, hold on. Humidity, thank you for the 20 months. Jesus. You almost got it. You were close. You got Jesus, though. Just wait wait for this one. Let me reread that sentence, okay? Just so, just, just so you can understand it. Uh, I once had a friend named Ronnie Mendez who wanted to fly airplanes for a living and fulfilled his dreams after being hired as a pilot. He always called me a fool for not wanting to be more adventurous, and after he died in a plane crash, I was the one saying, I told you so. Pretty good guy. He had been my only friend, and after his death five years ago, I found myself alone <laughs> Ronnie in his grave. Told you so. Told you, Ronnie. He read. He read the eulogy. I tried to tell him. Tried to tell him. Don't follow your dreams. Live in your 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 shitty apartment with green wallpaper and and weird images. Uh, there aren't too many coworkers in the office where I work. Semicolon. <laughs> My only friend died. Got him. <laughs> that idiot. He followed his dreams. What an idiot. Oh, Ronnie. He'll never learn. 
He'll never learn. Get <laughs> get fucking pitted, Ronnie. Get fucking uh, permanently affixed to a mountain, Ronnie. That'll teach you to dream. Oh man, <laughs> what a bummer! I have no one to talk. To. I know it's it's all it's all me, me, me. <laughs> oh god. Uh, an old <laughs> this fucking description. There aren't too many co-workers in the office where I work. An old ugly man whose name I don't even know. And Brian, the annoying guy whose desk is catty-quartered against mine. These are his co-workers, the ugly man and the annoying guy. All afternoon when my boss, Mr. McGee, is not around, Brian places silver sunglasses over his eyes and slips an open book in front of him. What? Why sunglasses? This was his way of sleeping on the job. Yeah, that, that'll that fucking work. He just puts sunglasses on in a book, and the boss thinks he's working. This, this is a pretty good place to work. Uh, this was his way of sleeping on the job, and surprisingly, no one but me knew about it. Brian is a big sports fanatic who finds himself at the racetrack long after everyone else uh, would have gone to bed. The only reason I even know his name is because he speaks of it in his sleep sometimes. Is his own name? He refers to himself in the third person in his sleep. What a fucking weirdo. 12 o'clock noon, comma, has always been the most annoying part of the day. 12 o'clock... <laughs> he says it again. 12 o'clock noon, comma, was my lunchtime. And after going to the lunchroom and picking up a sandwich from one of the trays, the annoyance would start. I enjoy sitting alone at one of the tables and eating my sandwich in peace. But one man, one employee, just didn't seem to understand that. 12 o'clock noon, comma, to me, was known as the Jerry Greenstein Garbage Hour. Ever since I could remember, Jerry Greenstein from down the hall has had the same lunch hour as me. No, let me rephrase that. Jerry Greenstein is the only other employee with the same lunch hour as me. How many fucking hours are people working? It's a hun okay, it's a hundred floor office. No one else eats lunch with you? What? <laughs> what? Uh, Jerry Greenstein was the tallest, fittest nerd that ever walked the planet. From his thick black glasses down to the pocket protectors that stuck out of his shirt. For the last ten years he's been working here ten years, holy shit. This man has not let me eat my lunch in peace and has tried to get me to join in on some of the most out, out, outrage, outrages, not outrageous, outrages, conversations I had ever heard in my entire life. I didn't know what looked worse on him, his thin blonde hair or his tie that never seemed to match the shirt he wore. Because you want a, a tie that looks exactly the same as your shirt, man. White shirt, white tie, blended in. Who even knows you're wearing a tie? It's a secret just for you. Today, he was wearing a purple shirt with a horrible bright orange tie. He always approached me with his bag lunch that his mother most likely packed from here. Yeah, what an idiot living with his mom when I live alone. <laughs> I live alone in an apartment I hate that smells. This this idiot gets lunch from his mom. What, an, what a dope. Uh, packed for him right after she had woke him up. There's my buddy, the Ogster. He waved as he sat himself down right beside me and began to unpack his lunch before I could even tell him to go sit at another table. Uh, he always called me the Ogster. Where or how he ever came up with such a horrible nickname is beyond me. Because truthfully, I wasn't even his friend. He called me the Ogster as if we were best friends who went fishing every weekend or went out to after work for dinner. Honestly, I believe that I was the only other person he would talk to because he seemed to ignore everyone else. He ignored every other living soul but me. He just fucking said that. I don't need to hear it again. And by calling me that silly nickname, I also believed that he wished I would call him something cool back. Because the Augs are just so fucking cool. As I began to eat my sandwich, I couldn't help but notice that his lunch had consisted of some leftover dinner from the night before, a pint of milk, and a homemade brownie. Jerry might have looked 35, but he was indeed the biggest baby I had ever met. What a baby. He's, he's a brownie. He's a milk. A fucking, a fucking baby. So did you watch Cro... <laughs> Guys, get ready for this Australian-themed trivia. 
So, did you watch Crocodile Hunters last night? It's Australia. He asked me, stuffing the fudge brownie into his mouth. God, my nose is fucking itching. Uh, for the past 10 years, oh my god, how many times are you going to reiterate this? For the past 10 years, I've told Jerry time and time again that I don't watch TV. But what does he do then? What does he, what does he do at home? But every day he insists on asking me if I had ever watched the same show as he had. I didn't want to say no as I do every day, so I quickly changed the subject. Do you enjoy letting your mother pack your lunch every day? Yes! He took a gulp of milk uh, to wash down the brownie. And I also love when she wakes me up in the morning. Okay. Is he joking or is he serious? I, I can't tell. Uh, now I knew that he lived with his mother, but I always believed I'd exaggerated the thought of her babying him like a child until I heard what he had just said. I'm going to go back to work now, I replied, finishing my lunch and rising to my feet. Before I could even walk away, he grabbed, he just grabbed his arm, causing me to turn around once again and face him. So just imagine someone just grabbing his, his arm. I was thinking that maybe we could get together one night and play a hand of, play a hand of cards. I was thinking we could get back together and, and play some cards, man. What do you think of that? Uh, no thanks, Jerry, I quickly replied, trying not to sound as if I were purposely blowing him off. I'm busy. Well, tell him the fuck off if you don't want to hang out with him, dude. I don't know what to tell you. If, if you don't, if, if you allow this sh kind of shit to happen, people are still going to bug you. Tell him fuck off. Fuck off, nerd. Go fuck your own mother. That's the only pussy you'll ever get. Then he won't talk to you anymore. Uh, afterwards, I left the lunchroom and returned to my desk. It seemed that every day Jerry would ask me to join him in some weird hobby. Of yeah, cards are just so weird. <laughs> Playing cards? <laughs> what the fuck? What a weirdo. Uh, that ev uh, It seemed that every day Jerry would ask me to join him in some weird hobby of his, cards being one of them. I always refused, of course, and made up some bogus excuse as to why I couldn't hang out with him. Some bogus excuse being, no thanks, Jerry, I'm busy. After filling out a hundred more documents, I packed up for the day and left the office at five. Each day, after walking down the flight of stairs, I would find uh, I would fight through the crowded streets to make my way home. I don't think Sydney is this busy, dude. I just, I just don't believe it. I think the streets would be more busy. Uh, let's see. Now, as I have said before, I have had a daily routine for the past ten years, which continues even after my, da my days at work. For the last 10 years, I've eaten alone, slept alone, and lived alone. Oh, damn, dude. He needs, some, he needs a lady in his life, I think. I actually don't mind it at all and prefer it to be that way. After pouring myself a glass of milk, I sat myself down at the kitchen table and begun to devour the sandwich I had made to the sound of silence. <laughs> I didn't listen to the... <laughs> he doesn't do anything! He doesn't do shit! After, I don't listen to the radio, nor did I bother turning the television on, semicolon. He doesn't do shit! What does he fucking do? He doesn't do a goddamn thing! Fucking, have a hobby, dude! Maybe you wouldn't be so miserable! I sit in silence and eat. That's what I do. That's what we do. We, we, we sit, right? We sit in front of the TV and we, and we, and we eat. And we don't say a word to each other or uh, turn the TV on. Just sit in silence and enjoy the silence. Oh, man. I loved quiet and wouldn't have it any other way. What I didn't know was that this would be the last night of silence. Solitude and any sanity that I would ever enjoy again. Dot, dot, dot. For the next morning would bring things that you would only see in dreams or in stories. The following morning when my alarm went off, I awoke as I did every morning, and walked to the window to open the shutters. When I approached the window, I noticed that they were already open. I had remembered shutting them the previous evening before crawling into bed, and I... Wh why didn't he tell us about this? I wanted... I want the breakdown of every fucking single thing he's doing. I closed the windows. I brushed my teeth. I scrubbed my ass in the bathtub. I scrubbed my back in the bath... Uh, in the bathtub. I did not masturbate because I hate anything uh, that would cause me pleasure. And I went straight to sleep, uh, thinking of nothing and dreaming of nothing. See, that's that's a that's the proper way for this character to explain his life. Uh, let's see. Uh, I didn't understand why or how they ended up like this way. Dot dot dot. Figuring that I probably forgot to shut them, I walked into the bathroom to get a shower before work. Before I could even pour the shampoo over my scalp, a loud crash occurred, sounding as if it were coming from my kitchen. I had never before heard a crash in my apartment. Never, never. Georgie has though. 
There you go. Uh, before I could even pour, uh, I ne uh, okay. Perhaps someone had broken in in the morning. That's a good time to break in. I quickly jumped out of the tub, wrapped the towel around myself, and cautiously walked out of the bathroom. Everything had gotten silent again, and I began to wonder if maybe I was hearing things. Sammy Colin, Sammy Colin. That's what I'm saying. Why does he? Why does he have a, t a TV if he doesn't fucking watch it? It doesn't make any sense. Look, I'm damaged. The chicken. Try tree. Thank you so much. This one's for you, bud. In, in the name of Poland. Thank you so much for the 13 months. Thank you so much, dude. Oh man, this Jim Beam is gonna be fucking gone. This iced tea is gonna be gone. Oh, uh, let's see. Every everything had gone okay. That was until I heard the crash again. Hello, I shouted out, taking hesitant steps uh, towards the kitchen. Who's there? No one answered, and I heard another crash. All right, whoever is in there better be ready for a good whooping. I boldly shouted. That's what a what a man you know, an alpha male shouts. I'd never been in a fight with anyone. I could only hope that whoever was in my room was as meek as me. Now, this doesn't make sense to me because this guy's supposed to be like a total pussy afraid of everything. Meanwhile, he's shouting at someone to scare them. He wouldn't have the fucking courage to do that. Before I could even shout another word, a voice spoke to me. It sounded like the voice of a young boy, but I wasn't sure. The cra- <laughs> the <laughs> A young boy had made it into his apartment through the window. The crashing had long since stopped with only the boy's voice echoing throughout the apartment. Please, sir! Don't- Don't do whatever! Whooping was it? It sounds horrible. I'm good. That's the young boy's voice. Uh, the voice startled me so much that I could only stand there dumbfounded. Uh, what are you doing in my apartment? How did you get in here? My voice sounded angrier than I meant it to. Dot dot dot. But it was extremely curious. I'm lost. I only wanted to get home, sir. <laughs> I didn't bother answering and entered my kitchen to notice that whoever was speaking to me had knocked over my shelf of dinner plates, causing them to smash into a million pieces. The shelf of them? What are you, a fucking grandmother? What on earth was he doing in my kitchen and smashing my plates? Why are you in my kitchen? The plates look shiny, sir, he replied. I couldn't resist. I picked up, I picked one up, and they fell on the floor and, and broke. Dot, dot, dot. I love shiny objects. Dot, dot, dot. I was only going to look at them. I swear. The seriousness in the voice was enough for me to believe him. <laughs> Where are you? I demand that you show yourself this is. This is like how Steve, like, uh, Chris Boris talks to ghosts. I demand you appear! Appear now! I was tired of playing hide-and-seek. I wanted this voice, this boy, to show himself at once. I quickly spun around, wanting to see... <laughs> what is he keep saying, boy? I quickly spun around, waiting to see a small schoolboy. But instead, instead there was no... I wonder if he was excited about it. But then instead there was no one. Seconds later, from out of the sky... Out of the sky in the apartment. Uh, something furry jumped onto my shoulders. I made no attempt to look at whatever it was and ran to my bed to hide beneath it. Uh, what on earth was in my room? In addition, where had the voice gone? I was sure that I was dreaming until I came out from under my bed and was taken by surprise. As soon as my head came out from underneath the red colored blankets. It's important to, to tell you what color they were right now. I looked up, and on top of my mattress, the furry head of a lemur was staring at me. This is a boo, guys. This is a boo. I surely thought that it had escaped from the zoo or something, dot, 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 until it spoke. Hello, it squeaked. It talked. It speaks. I almost hit my head on the bed frame as I scrambled to get to my feet and uh, away from the talking vermin. It was the voice, the voice that I was, cer that I was certain belonged to a boy. No, it was not a boy, semicolon. It was not a boy. It was not a boy! It was a lemur that looked exactly like a boo from Aladdin! The greatest shock of my life. Okay, this is a full shot. That was a full one. My god. My god. This is actually in Kingdom Hearts 3. They actually stole this story. It's part, it's, it's part of it, you can play it. Uh, let's see. No, it was not a boy. The childish voice belonged to a lemur, one that I had never seen before. I, of course, had seen them in the zoo. But this one was different. Yes, its ability to speak was strange enough to separate it from the rest, but there was more. 
It's gold colored fur along with the little red vest that he wore reflected exactly how odd this thing was. Now, let, let, listen, let me pull up. Let's see. Abu from Aladdin. I swear to God, it's the same fucking thing. It's it's Abu. I mean, what else? What else could it be? Hold on. Let's let's let's, let's throw him up here. Let's put him in here. That's a boo, dude. Red vest, golden fur. That's a boo. That's a boo. Let's get a side by side comparison here. Let's see. That's a boo, dude. Let's be fucking honest here. That's a boo. Same vest. That's a boo. Confirmed. That's a boo. Let's put let's let's keep a boo on 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 here actually. Let's have him like let's put him in like a fun spot. Let's like put him on my uh let's put him on my desk over here. Let's put him on my head. There you go. Oh, but I'd move then. And that ruins the illusion. Let's put him on my desk over here. Let's have a boo just hanging out. Let's make this real or real estate. He's just over here by my gym beam. That's a boo, guys. It's 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 the man himself. Yeah, this is actually what happened after Aladdin and the King of Thieves. This is this is where Abu went. Uh, let's see. Ah, man, I backed up against my windowsill, clutching my towel to my chest as I walked as I watched him come closer and closer to me, with his long golden tail swaggering behind him. Yeah, he's fucking showing off, dude. He's showing that he's he's strong. He's threatening. Uh. I never took my eyes off of him as he jumped up onto the ledge and looked at me straight in the eyes. I said hello, he crossed his furry arms. Aren't you going to say something back? You're being rather rude. I was too afraid to say a single word of a lemur. <laughs> what a fucking pussy. Uh, no, not of him, but of the undeniable fact that I was probably cracking up. Sorry, I never had a conversation with a monkey before, even though he just said a le he was a lemur like three times. I backed away from him as if he were carrying the plague. Monkey? Monkey? No, sir, I am not a monkey. I am a lemur. A golden Rodicus lemur, to be exact. Is that a real thing? Let's see this. Golden Rodicus lemur. Golden bamboo lemur. Okay, so, you know. I like, uh... I like to keep this grounded in reality for everybody here. So let's let's take a look at a golden lemur. Just to put it in perspective, you know, because th this is a very realistic book. Uh, so here's a golden lemur. All right. This is a golden lemur. And um, hold. On. And here's a boo. So you know it's it's pr it's about the same thing. It's pretty much the same. I mean, you could you could tell. I mean, look at the boo and him. They look almost identical. It's a pretty that's uncanny. That is crazy, man. She did so much research on this. This is pretty cool. This is pretty dope, man. I love this. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> Golden Lemur is copyrighted. She's gonna get fucking sued. I would love to hear. I, I would love to read the transcript for that court case. This bitch stole my Golden Lemur. Uh, let's see. Uh, he crossed his arms and gave me a dirty look. Rodicus Le the the lemur gave him a dirty look. <laughs> fucking lemur. Can you draw the lemur giving a dirty look? <laughs> Do you have any drawings, by the way? I'm doing. She has she has pictures of a boo on her computer screen. <laughs> Can I please just see what you're making? No. Come on. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> she has. I I'm look. I looked at her screen. She clicked off of it now. But there were there were four images of a boo on Google on her screen. Where is it? Where's a boo? Where did it go? Can I take a peek at it? I'm not gonna show it. I'm not gonna show it. I just wanna see it. I wanna see what you're working. Oh um. <laughs> Oh no! All right, I need I need you to make a boo. 
Abu with a dirty look. She has four images of Abu in Google. Oh, God. Abu is like the first thing we talked about when we heard about this stupid fucking book. It's just a boo. He's got a he's got a vest. The only thing he's missing is the little fez. You couldn't have fucking thought of a different creature. Jesus Christ! She watched Aladdin and just said, "That'll do. That'll be the protagonist." <laughs> oh my God, Rodicus Lemur? I question. They don't even exist. Why did they come up on Google? Then I had never ever I. I, I <laughs> ever heard of that name before especially from a talking monkey first off let first off let's get one thing straight i am not i'm not just a rodicus lemur i am a golden rodicus lemur he pulled at his golden fur he's, just, he's like he's showing his chest he, he's giving dirty looks he's so tough dude he's so fucking swole this this lemur fucking lifts this, this lemur's jacked as fuck my god he could kick his ass uh, I wouldn't be a gold. I wouldn't be a golden rodicus lemur if my fur were any other color, would I? All I could think about was why I couldn't wake up from this horrible dream. Golden fur and talking monkeys. Semicolon. God fucking damn it. God damn it, guys. We're gonna we're gonna hit ten semicolons. Maybe more. I will not survive the night. I'm gonna be fucking out. Damn. Erotic as a kid. Oh man, I would love to read that fan fiction. It's the fucking erotic fan fiction about uh, the golden lemur. Let me show you exactly what I can do. I want to be an erotic as lemur if I didn't have this big golden dick. Uh, let's see. But as I pinched myself, I realized that it wasn't. Therefore, if talking lemurs were going to haunt my dreams, then I guess uh, it would be best to tell them to go away. Well then, Goldie, why don't you... <laughs> oh, listen to what he says to him. Why don't you jump out of this... Wi why don't you jump out this window and go back to wherever it is you came from? Goldie, my name is not Goldie. It's Lodus. L-O-D-U-S. Lodus. And no, I cannot leave. I'm lost. Well, tell me what zoo you belong to and I'll be glad to take you there on my way to work. I was beginning to lose my patience with this wretched dream and desperately wanted it to be over. Lotus, however, looked over at me with such confusion as if I were the talking monkey. Zoo? He, quen he questioned. I do not belong in any zoo. I'm from the village of Rumble Twaza. Oh, <laughs> it's a good reaction. <laughs> Rumble Twaza? There's no such place called Rumble Twaza, I shouted so loud that I was sure I had strained my vocal cords. I was now part of my, I was now far past my limit. First I get a talking lemur standing in my room dot 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 and now instead of belonging to a zoo he's from some made up place called Rumble Ta something. He had no problem saying it before. I decided to play along with him just to see how far I could possibly go. If there is such a place, uh then where is it located? I asked. Past the grassy savannas of Africa over the border of Mexico. Also, she spells border with an A. B-O-A-R-D-E-R. Boarder. It's a piece of wood. Uh, and, th and through the crystal clear waters of Bermuda, answered Lotus, his voice filled with such sincerity. And how did you get here, I asked. It's so far away. What brings you to Australia? Lotus looked up at me and placed his paws against the glass of the window, taking a moment to answer. Um, I don't know what I actually remember. I glanced down at my watch and noticed that it was 8.50 and I was late leaving my room. I had never been late in my daily routine, and that was until now. I quickly threw on some clothes and was about to leave when Lotus jumped on my shoulders and clung to me. Please take me with you! He seemed so scared, uh, and I hadn't the time to figure out why. Could I possibly take him with me to work? No way! I would be the laughing stock of the whole city. A talking monkey in my back is all I need. Yeah, that's what they do. They laugh. Yeah, they'll make fun of you. Yeah, they'll make fun of <laughs> amazing thing they've ever seen. Yeah, look at this idiot. He's got a talking monkey on him. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> what a dope. He's got a talking monkey. Look at this shithead. Oh, man. Let's see. No, you're not going to... You're going to stay here until I return home. Then I'll figure out what to do with you. I said sternly, grabbing a hold of Lotus's vest. He just grabs the monkey by the fucking chest. Uh... Lotus kept clinging to my shirt, but I managed to pull him off and throw him down on my bed. Oh, this might become a little erotic. 
giving myself just enough time to lock my apartment door to begin running to the office. The whole situation had to be a dream, and I knew that probably by the time I had make, made it back home, there would be no talking lemurs in my room, and it would all turn out to be some hideous hallucination. She uses the worst adjectives. Uh, once I made it to my desk, hardly anyone had noticed that I was late. That is, everyone except for Jerry, semicolon. Semicolon. This monkey's about to get fucked, dude. God. God damn. Oh! Huh! This is good I see! Oh! It's in the office is, uh, his asshole friend Jerry, dude. Hate that guy. This guy, that guy sucks. Let's see. Uh, where are we? He, of course, smiled and waved at me as I took my seat. All I could do was just stare at my day's work as if nothing had happened to me that morning. After filling out my first document, I opened the bottom drawer to place it in its correct file. Only to find Lotus's head pop out from its opening. How the fuck did he get in the drawer without you noticing? This is a magic uh, lemur. Uh, I couldn't believe that this nightmare was coming true. There he was, sitting in the bottom drawer of my desk, with a stupid smile upon his face. This guy fucking hates animals. Hello, he called. I immediately shut the drawer as far as I can. He just slammed the drawer. He could have decapitated this poor thing. Uh, making a loud noise and causing everyone to look over at me for a few seconds. All I could do was stay motionless as as motionless as possible. Another fucking semicolon. Another one. Another one. No, no, he's heading to work. He was already late. His routine is all off. He's going to lose it. Mmm. Oh, Lotus. What a guy. This is such a- this is such a task to fucking read through this. I'm getting flashbacks to when I tried to do this before. I couldn't get past, I think, the second chapter? I- I don't think- I, I don't think I finished the second chapter. Uh... Where were we? Hoping that no- none of them had just seen what was in the bottom of my drawer. Uh... The, the bottom drawer of my desk. After they had glanced away, I placed my hand back of the drawer, too nervous to open it back up. Excuse me, Lotus mumbled from inside the drawer. It's kind of dark in here, sir. Slowly, I opened it once more to see if uh, he was still sitting in there. And he was. I closed my eyes for a few seconds and counted to ten to see if my hallucinations had stopped. But when I opened my eyes once more, the furball was still sitting there, smiling at me. What do you want? What do you want? I yelled at the top of my lungs in an office. I glanced around and noticed that everyone was looking at me again, and I tried to act normal by giving them a smile. That'll do it. Quickly, I lowered my voice and glanced back down at Lotus. How did you get here? I demanded. Well, I crossed the street and climbed up lots and lots of stairs. Someone should really get the elevator fixed. Climbing those stairs hurts my paws. No, I mean, how did you get here? I pointed to the floor, demanding him to tell me why he had followed me to work. That's just what you fucking asked him, dude. Lotus plopped back down in the drawer on the piles of paper and began to sway his arms and legs back and forth. Look, I'm making paper angels, he laughed, causing everyone to look back at my desk. No one hears this lemur? He was making me look crazy, and I couldn't take it any longer. I waved my arms at the monkeys, at the monkeys, signaling for him to stop. Now, l now listen, okay? I get the trope of calling the thing the wrong animal, okay? That's fine. People do it all the time in film. But once he's told you multiple fucking times that he's a lemur, you're just calling him a monkey to be an asshole. I think you should probably call him a lemur from then on. I think we get it. And there's no comedic value left anymore. Read it all in one sitting? Probably not. I don't think I could get through that. We're on page 23. There's 300 pages in this thing. Oh, man. I'm just going to try to read as much as I possibly can. Before my mental state deteriorates. Uh, let's see. He was making me look crazy and I couldn't take it any longer. I waved my arms at the monkey, signaling for him to stop. You're no fun, Lotus sat up and crossed his arms. Fine, you can stay, I said. You're <laughs> giving it to the hallucination. As long as you sit in that drawer and behave yourself like a good little monkey. Lemur, he yelled. We get it. He's a fucking lemur. Stop calling him a monkey. Once again, everyone looked at me, and this time, I wasn't going to be made a crazy person. Quickly, I looked over at everyone and began to organize my papers. Lemurs! I heard they got loose from the zoo! I faltered. He's, is he yelling this at people? 
this had caused everyone to look away and give me a chance to shut the drawer. From inside, Lotus kicked, but I kicked back. Caused Damn, dude, he's kicking this. He's kicking the drawer. He's kicking the, the little lemur inside. Uh, caused him to hush. Finally, I was able to work without any childish vo voice annoying me or distracting me from my daily duties. Uh, when it was finally time for me to go to lunch, I opened the bottom drawer of my desk and to find Lotus curled up into a ball, fast asleep. Did he have fucking air in there? I once learned to never wake a baby, a sleeping baby, and I was not about to wake a sleeping monkey. He's still calling it a monkey. He's still calling it a monkey. He's been told it's a lemur about five times now. And an annoying one at that. Instead, I grabbed my lunch and walked to the lunchroom, where once again, Jerry was there to greet me. There's my buddy, the Augster. How are you? I just looked at him, too annoyed to speak to the man. At that moment, the great idea of giving him the talking lemur popped into my head. They both like to annoy people, so why not just annoy each other? It was a brilliant... It, what? It was brilliant, but if Lotus were just a figment of my imagination, I didn't want to make myself look insane, so I kept it to myself. Also, he called it a lemur. Let's see if he calls it a monkey again. So now he acknowledges that it's a lemur. I began to devour my turkey sandwich. I glanced out to where my desk was and noticed Brian fast asleep as usual with those sunglasses over his eyes. Then I then it caught my attention. Semicolon. Semicolon. Yeah, dude. Oh, Jerry would love that shit. Just be playing cards with him. Such a weird hobby, isn't it? Man, people play cards. Weird people. Very weird people. Let's see. A ball of golden fur moving towards him cautiously. I thought for a few seconds before remembering that Lotus was in my desk and that he loved shiny objects. The rim of Brian's glasses was sil was silver. The rim of his glasses was silver. Giving off a shiny glow. And Lotus definitely noticed. That's a good rhyme. Quickly, I shot up from the table and ran out of the lunchroom. Just as Lotus was going for the glasses, I stood there waving my arms in front of them, or, or in front of him. But the shininess from the glasses was pulling him in like some sort of magnetic vortex. As soon as Lotus removed the glasses from Brian's face, he awoke and chaos ensued. I swear to God, she wrote this like a '90s comedy. Like she wrote, she she watched like uh, Kindergarten Cop, and she's like, "Yeah, I could I can make a book out of this. I could put some wacky situation and make it translate, and everyone will laugh. Everyone will love it." The first thing Brian saw was Lotus wearing the glasses, and he screamed. He, he, he screamed. Ah! <laughs> like, oh my god, there's a, there's a lemur? Ah! <laughs> he wakes up to a monkey, to a lemur with his glasses. Ah! There you go. Oh there's man. Kilton Kraken, thank you for the five the months. It is a lemur, indeed. Oh my god. Yeah, Dustin ground. checks in. She watched Dustin checks and she's like, I could write a book like this, but with a lemur. Oh my god. Oh my god. God damn. His screaming caused every one of my coworkers, by the way, he screamed like this, ah! of my coworkers to look over and spot Lotus sitting on my desk, causing everyone else to scream as well. So everyone in the office is going, ah! <laughs> this, is, this is what happens. People see a, a lemur and they just scream. Uh, I tried to grab him, but he scrambled away too quickly, and all hope of catching him was lost. All throughout my office, Lotus jumped from desk to desk, wearing the silver sunglasses. This is the 90s comedy! It's, 90s comedy. it's so stupid! And scaring every one of my coworkers, even my boss, Mr. McGee, whom I thought wasn't afraid of anything. Call the animal control, he yelled. Somebody throw it out the window! <laughs> THROW THE FUCKING THING OUT THE WINDOW QUICK! THROW THIS FUCKING ANIMAL OUT THE WINDOW! Yel yelped Brian, making his way over- Man, Brian's a fucking pussy, dude! Those glasses were all talk! He wants to throw an animal out the window! He sees a kidney, he's like, THROW THAT FUCKING THING OUT THE WINDOW! I stood there, wondering what I could do. Dot dot dot. Which wasn't much. If I would've known a talking monkey- HE JUST CALLED IT A LEMUR! HE CALLED IT A LEMUR! It's still a fucking monkey to him. Oh. That's a good summary. Main character Augie is a miserable bastard who has now been visited by a lemur that is heavily based on Abu from Aladdin. That's a good summary. That is exactly the book right now. You're, you're all caught up with, with Kando's summary. 
Oh, God. Let's see. At least other people saw it as we saw it. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's a boo. It's a boo. I stood there wondering what I could do, which wasn't much. If I would have known the talking monkey was going to be in my office hours before now, I still wouldn't have a clue on what to do. I believe that my co-workers were afraid of Lotus's appearance rather than his ability to talk. They were just afraid. God, lemurs are so terrifying, guys. God, I see a lemur. I flip the fuck out. I'm like, throw the fucking thing out the window. Get the, get the thing out of here. Take, take it by the tail. Toss it the fuck out. A lemur. A lemur. A cute little lemur. Huh, you got something? I got something. I got artwork for you guys. It's crap, but it gets the it's point. It's not crap. It's crap. It gets the point across. It's not crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the first piece of artwork, everybody. <laughs> of the miserable main character with Lotus, a.k.a. Abu from Aladdin, saying help. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Can you please draw a boo with a dirty look? Well, Lotus with a dirty look Lotus on his face. With a dirty look. Please. <laughs> please, I need to see it. I need everyone to see it. Okay. Oh, oh my god. god. Do you see how dedicated we are to this fucking garbage? This we we this has been like a a a, a, a therapeutic se session for us to yeah. share this with other people. Oh my god. A, a, a lemur giving a dirty look. A lemur. It's like saying that Yuki gave us a dirty I, look. Yeah. Actually, a cat could probably give a better dirty look than a fucking lemur. Can you imagine this face giving you a dirty look? Oh my it can't God. move anything. Oh, my God. It can't move a fucking thing. Everything's frozen in place. Oh, my God. Where did I leave off? He had not spoken to anyone, and frankly, I was glad, because I really didn't want to see what would happen if they knew he could speak. From the corner of my eye, I spotted my silver pen sitting on my desk. It's important to know what color it was, and knew that if I could get Lotus's attention with it, it could probably I could probably end this. So it was important that we knew the color. Also, the chapter's almost over, guys. We're almost at chapter two. I grabbed the pen, ran to where Lotus was jumping around, and waved it in front of his eyes. The glimmer from my pen instantly hypnotized him. And his eyes moved where the pen went. I threw it out into the hall and watched as he finally ran out of the office. I was pretty sure my boss knew it was me who had brought Lotus in. How would he know? Uh, because as soon as the door to the office was shut again, he grabbed me by the shirt and threw me down into the chair. God, office abuse. Uh-oh, tell HR about this one. Do you think that was funny, he asked. I don't know what you're talking about, sir, I added. My boss, Mr. McGee, crossed his arms and looked at me as if I ha had set the whole building on fire. That's how I looked at him. Did I say that it was take your pet to work day? This is a 90s comedy. You, you just caused a whole uproar in this office because you decided to bring in your pet monkey. You guys get the joke? It's a lemur. It's a lemur! A lemur. What? His dirty... He actually said that. His dirty look turned uglier as I cut in with my stupid remark. What? What? He's a lemur, sir. So now you fucking get it! You called him a monkey two dozen times! Mr. McGee began to laugh sarcastically as I sat there not knowing what to say. How do you laugh sarcastically? Heh heh heh. How do you laugh sarcastically? <laughs> why would why would he laugh sarcastically? A lemur, does that give you the right to bring him in here? Did you think that was funny? replied Mr. McGee, McGee angrily clutch. Did you think that was funny? Angrily clutching his fists. No, sir, I didn't do it. You see, he talks. Talks! I have just about had enough of your lies, Atwell. Talking lemurs! The nerve of you making up such a lie. <laughs> You're fired! Pack up your desk and leave right now. Take the whole desk. You better put that desk on your back. My world was shattered at that moment. For the past 10 years, I have worked in Mr. McGee's office behind a nice safe desk, dot, dot, dot. And in two seconds, I had been fired, and all because of a little talking lemur that came to me from a made-up place called Rumble Twaza. 
But he hated this job. This was a dream, semicolon. He fucking hated this job. Why is he complaining? This is a blessing in disguise. This guy's threatening him. He's fucking t grabbing him by the shirt. I don't know how they do it in Australia, but I'm pretty sure you can get an HR involved in that shit. I'm almost positive you could get it involved. Oh, man. Yeah, seriously. He's just like, this guy sucks. This guy's depressing. He hates everybody. All right. Talking lemur. Perfect opportunity. Uh, this was a dream. It had to be a bad dream. I just knew that any minute I would wake up and laugh about the whole thing. I don't think this guy ever laughs. Uh, as I ate breakfast and walked to work. If this was a dream and if it were going to continue, all I could think about was the fact that maybe talking lemurs were the least of my worries. Dot, dot, dot. All right, everybody. That's the end of chapter one. Uh, what do you guys think of this book so far? Are you invested? How do you feel about the characters? I, I would love to know. Um, is she a good author? Is, is she good? A am I wrong? Are we wrong? It's good. <laughs> it's good, semicolon, but. <laughs> oh, God. She's definitely an author. I agree with you. I completely agree with you. You have to know how this ends. I do too. I've never finished it. I have, I've had this book for like 10 years. Seriously, 10 years. Or actually not. Maybe not 10 years. It's been a long time. Well, had it in the old apartment. That's right. So at least at least five years. Uh, okay. I hope chapter two is his job hunt. You got another one? That's, that's a dirty look. <laughs> here's, here's, here's the Lotus's dirty look, everybody. Bastard! <laughs> this is what he looked like. This actually happened. Can you can you draw all you looking at the weird pictures on the wall and the and the awful green uh, wallpaper? I know you won't be able to make it green, but I would love to see this. Is it him looking at it? Yeah, just the awful draw draw the awful uh, artwork on the walls. Oh Hold on, let me. Let, I'll, I'll, the description. Here, I'll get you the description right now. This is very, very weird. Uh, okay. Strange looking birds is one of them. A black cloudless sky. And a purple field with deer running through its pasture. Those are, those are the three images. Black cloudless sky. Yeah. Birds. Weird uh, or strange looking birds. This is key. Strange looking birds. And a purple field with deer running through its pasture. And you have to put Augie, like, really upset looking at this. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. Here's the thing, okay? It sounds like it's made, like, it's aimed at kids, okay? Let, let, me, let me tell you something. When this first came out, when she was writing this, she said this is a young adult novel. No joke. She thought this was for young adults. Then, after people were lambasting her because of how shitty this was and all the spelling errors, the first printing of this of this book had so many spelling errors, she had to issue a, a release that said, I'm going to edit out all the spelling errors. And there's still some. I don't know if I got an earlier printing or what, but there's still spelling errors in it. Then she changed it to a children's book, to like reading level four to six. She thought this was a young adult novel. Okay. Okay. It's pretty good. It's not 10 years old. I, I, I've been involved in her artwork for about 10 years. It, this, this is, I think this came out in 2012. So it's like six, seven years old. It's, it's a little old. It's got some age to it. You know, it's like a fine wine. I know, right? What she, and she has all these pictures of children reading her shitty stories, and it's, I'm just thinking like, oh god, get an education, please don't do this to yourselves, they're please. The, they're the kids of like her friends. That's right. She forced this on her friends' kids. I just, oh man, they could do so much better. She seriously like I I have this idea in my head that she thought this was gonna be the next Harry Potter. She thought she had a hit on her hands. Why is Two-Face hugging a pineapple? 
I have yet to understand this image. You have the same questions oh, that, that I have. Oh my god. Yeah. Also, Two Face has a, a a tattoo of a big dick demon on his face. If you can, you can see it now. I, I just want everybody to be able to see what I've seen for for over five years. Oh yeah, I think I think kids should be banned from reading, just to be safe, just so they're not exposed to this. But uh, oh god, we've reached chapter two, everyone. There's no turning back now. There's no, there's no turning back now. How many semicolons are going to be in in chapter two? But aren't you glad I didn't save this for a future stream that I that I'd shared this with you now? That's why it's Australia because Britain has. Oh, maybe that's it. She's like, I wanted to set this in England, but everybody's going to draw parallels because everyone would draw parallels between uh, Harry Potter and this. Because obviously it's it's like Harry Potter. Oh man, how many? I, I I have to see. Oh, here's some artwork by the way, from her. It's so cute, dude. Abu is uh, with a piece of milk, or a piece of milk, a carton of milk, and he's got his sunglasses on. Everyone. Oh, how many pages does this have? It's it's so painful to read this. Like I said, when we first started reading this, me and my lady, we were laughing so hard we couldn't get through more than three pages. It was so bad. All right, let's see. So this this chapter ends at page fifty nine. We're at page twenty eight right now. God damn! It doesn't it look better without color? The color wrecks it. She cannot color for her life. Not that she could draw either, but you know, I'm not an artist. She is. She knows. Can she draw? Better than me. Yeah? Better than me. There's your consensus. In in five minutes, uh, she drew about her level of artwork. <laughs> it's pretty good, man. A nice piece of milk. That's what I like. Okay. So let's move on to chapter two here. Chapter two, past the grassy savannas of Africa. All right. I finally made it through the crowds, carrying my box of belongings that I cleared from off of my desk. When I walked into my complex, those... <laughs> here we go again. Those horrible green walls were there to greet me. As I walked past each of the rooms, I noticed that the door to one of them was open, and a disgust... <laughs> my god, the way she describes people. A disgusting old woman with curly gray hair was standing there watching me. Can you draw a disgusting old woman with curly I'll gray hair? The, After this. Side. Oh, you're gonna put her on the side? Yeah. Oh, god. Her weird birds... Black skies. Yeah, how does a weird bird look? How do you draw all that on one wall? Like how? No, she, there's like paper? different. There's like different images. Like you know how they hand up, hang up uh, artwork yeah. in certain complexes. I think there's one of birds. There's one of a, a dark sky, and there's one of what are what else? The deer. You, the deer. There's like okay. different. Ones. It, it's like thrift store artwork. Okay, that's what I kind of thought that. All right. So it's so stupid. <laughs> I want to know how this pineapple lady comes in. She's a pineapple. Why is she wearing a reverse pineapple? When does she come in? Okay. Let's see here. Uh, old woman with curly gray hair was standing there watching me. I had never seen her up until now, even though he lived here for fucking 10 years. And if her creepy appearance wasn't enough to make you want to stay away, her stare would. Once I opened the door to my apartment and walked in, I threw the box of crap onto the floor and entered my kitchen, hoping to find something to drink. I began to think that maybe Lotus had left, semicolon. You would know if you had something to drink. You don't fucking do anything else. You don't watch TV. You don't listen to the radio. Wouldn't you know what kind of groceries you fucking have, you degenerate? I'm asking questions of a man who doesn't exist. This is how angry I get. The photo reference? She probably traced this all with something. I wouldn't be surprised. But I've always called it Avatar Prince Zuko with a demon demon dick tattoo. That's my that's my reference for the image. Uh let's see. Man, these these semicolons are throwing me the fuck off, man. Where do we have it? Okay, that was until I opened my fridge and saw him sitting on the top shelf devouring the chocolate cake that I had baked a few days earlier. I don't think that's safe for a lemur to do that. 
I slammed the chilled door shut and grabbed the glass from off the counter before reopening my fridge to face this horrid dream once more. She's compared this to a dream and a nightmare like a dozen times by this point. There, in my fridge, sat Lotus, licking his furry paws that were covered in chocolate from touching the cake that was sitting next to him on the plate. He looked over at me and smiled, the chocolate icing dripping from his golden cheeks. This cake is delicious, he exclaimed, taking another handful of chocolate and shoving it into his mouth. What are you doing in my... Oh, what are you doing in my fridge? This is the problem she has with with quotes. She, you never know who's saying it. Lotus shrugged his shoulders as he continued eating what was left of my cake. I just about... I was just about sick and tired of his games! With an exclamation point. I quickly pulled him from out of the fridge and threw him onto the floor. He threw him onto the floor. This is where the animal abuse begins. He stood up on his hind legs and wiped his mouth before looking back up at me with such disgust. As if I were the one causing problems. You just threw a fucking lemur on the ground, dude. You could have fucking killed it. It's a tiny animal. Why are you still here, I asked. Well, you haven't helped me yet. Uh, help him? Help him? He was, he has, he had just gotten me fired and now he wanted me to help him. All I wanted to do was call the animal control on him so that he would be out of this horrible dream. I didn't fucking do it, dude. Who's stopping you? Uh, you just got me fired from my job, I shouted. At that moment, Lotus whipped out his the silver sunglasses and placed them on his face. Do you like them? I do. They're so shiny. He replied, dancing around my kitchen like some love-stricken gypsy. Hey, we don't say that word around here. That's a derogatory term. I grabbed the annoying twit and held him up to my face. He just, just up to here. Uh, demanding answers as to why... He was he was bothering me. Why are you here? I wanted to know. I should grab my cat and hold him up to my face so you have a you have a reference image. Hold on. I'm gonna hold one of my cats up to my face. Hold on. This is how he held uh, the lemur. Okay. Let me get in frame here. Up to my face. Look at me, Taiga. Look at me. Look at me. This is the the gamer uh, the gamer cat right here. What'd you sneeze at? Hi. What was the old lady? What did she look like? <laughs> you want me to read you the description for the old yeah. woman? Uh. Old. <laughs> okay, ready. Yeah. A disgusting old woman with curly gray hair. The description is disgusting for a human being. Oh, man. Taiga is a star. She usually stays in here, but I don't have a chair available for her. Um, let's see. What do we got here? Oh, God. Every time I hold her in my face, her, her hair, like, activates my allergies. She's got such a dusty... Such dusty fur, man. She's like She's like one big... Dust bunny, it's not good. It's not good for me. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Before Lotus could answer, I, oh, I know that's not it. We're. I grabbed the annoying twit and held him up to my face, just, just, like, just like this, up to his face, demanding answers as to why he was bothering me. Why are you here? I want to. I want to know now. I'm looking for someone. He replied, his head turning in all directions, just a hundred or three hundred and sixty degrees. Uh, who? Who is it that you're looking for? My god, she's really- she's infected my- my nose. Before Lotus could answer, a knock occurred at my door. It was strange, because no one ever came knocking, especially for me. Lotus immediately grabbed my shirt. Uh, like a madman, to hold me back from stepping towards the door. No, don't open it! Don't open the door! I threw Lotus off, he just throws him on the ground. And approached the door anyway looking out the peephole to see the disgusting old woman standing there. Just the same fucking word to describe her. It has nothing else to say. Uh, don't be silly. It's just the old lady from down the hall, I assured. No, don't do it. She's found me. I, I pretended as if I had not heard a word Lotus was saying and opened the door to find the old woman standing behind it. May I help you with something, I asked? Yes, she grinned. I believe you have a lemur that I must destroy. What? She's animal control. At that moment, the disgusting- <laughs> She says disgusting a third fucking time! You can't use a different word?! You have no other words?! 
the disgusting old woman began shrinking and growing black fur before my very own eyes. My god, Tiger really got me. I slammed the door closed and locked it as Lotus struggled to barricade it with the cr with the couch. Like a baby, I crouched there in the court. He described himself as a baby. Wondering when this horrible dream was going to end. A as Lotus struggled with the couch, I he stopped and took a deep breath. Come on, Augie, help me move this. This really is a, a buddy comedy now. He knew my name. How did he know my name? I had never told it to him, but he did. He knew it. Uh, I quickly pushed the couch across the doorway and grabbed Lotus by a shiny red vest. <laughs> uh, like a disgusting baby. She, she should have said that. How do you know my name? <laughs> she really gets to the point. I shook him in front of my face. How do you know my name? Why does it look like I'm jerking off? Uh, I just missed the pages. How do you know my name? Uh, answer me! How do you know my name? I was furious, and all the lemur did was shrug his... That's what the lemur did. All he did was shrug his shoulders and give me that stupid... Give me that stupid smile. It's a mystery, I guess! It's a mystery, I guess! From outside in the hall, whatever the old woman transformed into... <laughs> We're just ignoring the fact that the woman just dis just transformed into something. Uh, began pushing into the door, making a loud noise. Lotus tugged at my shirt and led me over to the window. Come on, we have no time! While I stood there pondering, the door broke open and a big black wolf entered my room on all fours. This is a furry novel now. It growled and stared at me with its big green eyes. As it began to charge after me, Lotus opened the window and waved me on. This dream just kept getting worse and worse. First, a talking lemur. Then, an old woman who... Transformed into some kind of hound, and now Lotus wanted me to jump out my window and plummet to my death. Damn, dude. Oh my god, it kind of does look like Xavier Renegade Angel. Just needs the the snake arm, and okay. and that's it. You got it. Oh, it's guys. Crap, but it's... You say that about everything. <laughs> guys, okay, this is this is the image of Augie's uh, hallway. And the art, okay? So we got, hold on, I'm trying to, so there's Augie. There's the weird bird. There's the black sky, and there's the deer. And here we have, hold on, oh, I'm trying to get this the right way. We got the old, disgusting woman with gray hair. She's so disgusting. We got the complete image here. There it is. This is official artwork. I love that she's <laughs> spitting. You added more detail to the to the night sky than than she even described. I just imagine a black <laughs> canvas, like seriously. And the, the bird has like weird I legs. Did that. <laughs> no, you you added to it. You improved her story. How dare you? Yeah. She's so disgusting. She's spitting everywhere. It's it's so nasty. Did you guys know he, she's disgusting? <laughs> hey, can you describe the old woman to me? She's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I fucking I, I I fucking hate this. I really do. <coughs> okay. Uh, the wolf charged at me as I ran into my kitchen and grabbed the first thing available, which was a pot. I thought I read this first as which was pot. Uh, when I turned around, there was there she was slobbering in front of me and ready to pounce. Nice doggy. I whimpered out, holding the pot in front of me like a shield. Just when I thought it was all over, I saw something jump above me and looked up to see Lotus. You old hag, go back to the swamp you crawled out of, because that's where wolves are from. After watching Lotus stick his large, slimy tongue... Dude, lemurs have large, slimy tongues? I don't think so. Out at whatever was standing in front of me, he opened the cabinet and pushed all the pots and pans from it, causing them to avalanche onto the wolf and pin it down. This is a, this is a fucking 90s comedy. Quickly, he grabbed my arm and forced me to the window once more. Stand on the ledge, he told me. I, I can't, I'll fall. As I have said before, I was afraid of everything, in case you forgot. And I was certain to fall once stepping up onto the ledge, but Lotus forced me anyway. From the kitchen, I could see the wolf beginning to emerge from the piles of pots, giving us only seconds before it could attempt another attack. I glanced down onto the streets from the windowsill and took notice to the cars, which looked like tiny toy vehicle. How high up is he? 
I, I didn't think he was that high up. Lotus grabbed onto the top of the window ledge and wh uh, whistled as I could only begin to wonder what on earth was going on. Seconds later, Lotus was in my face. Jump, he pleaded. Jump now! I just looked down and refused. No, I'll die for sure, I quivered. Jump, he repeated. Jump now! <laughs> just the same line. Still, I refused, and that's when he pushed me. A little lemur pushed him. He really is a pussy. I began to fall through the night air and knew uh, that it wouldn't be long before my head met the pavement. I closed my eyes and was ready to for the hard cement when I felt two claws grasp the back of my shirt. When I opened my eyes, I looked down and noticed that I wasn't falling, but flying higher and higher. When I glanced up, there were two large yellow feet clung to my shirt, semicolon. I was about to say there hasn't been a semicolon in a while. I think I jinxed myself. Goddamn. A goddamn. Mm-mm-mm. Oh man. Oh man! This is some wild ride. First bottle of water has been finished. We're moving on to the second after this. Okay. Uh, those feet belong to a very enormous black crow. Is this the weird bird? Never had I ever seen a bird this big, and I was certain that I was to become its prey. That was until it swung me up in the air and let me land on its back. Once again, when I was swung, I closed my eyes and only opened them when I felt feathers against my face. When I opened them, I glanced over to see Lotus sitting on the shoulders of a beautiful woman. She had the prettiest pale skin. <laughs> the prettiest pale skin. I had ever seen, along with gorgeous brown shoulder-length hair, and her eyes. Oh, her eyes were delectable, too. I'd eat them right out. Pick, pick them right out. I'd eat them. I'd put them right in my mouth. Her eyes were the same color as her hair. As I kept staring at her, all I could think about was how perfect she was. She was wearing a worn, uh, light brown fedora. <laughs> Just, she's a fucking incel. <laughs> she's a fucking incel. God, she's so hot. She's got beautiful pale skin and a fedora. My perfect incel waifu. Oh my god. <laughs> it's all self insert. Oh man, if I had shown you what she looks like. Oh boy. Not like this, surprisingly. This 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 woman probably looks better than her. Uh, no offense to the author. Okay. Uh, let's see. All I could think about was how perfect she was. She was wearing a worn, light brown fedora and had on black boots that came up to her knees. Everything else on her skinny body was covered by... This is actually like an author self-insert that's the perfect version of the author. This is what she wished that she looked like. Uh, everything else on her skinny body was covered by a tan-colored jacket, which looked like it had been passed down to her by her great-great-grandfather. Is that your monkey? I asked her. You said it was a lemur. You said it was a lemur multiple times. What is the joke here? We've established it's a lemur. You corrected someone twice that it was a lemur. Are we still gonna? Are we still making this joke? Are we still calling it a monkey? If you don't understand comedy, you don't. You just don't. You don't get it. Oh, my God. Her brow rose in question. Uh, lemur, she corrected. He's a lemur. You've said it multiple times. Lotus crossed his arms and rolled his eyes at me. I've been telling him that all afternoon, but he's... I've been telling him that all afternoon, but he still hasn't gotten it right. I was so frustrated with the whole situation, semicolon. Oh, boy. Yeah, can I can I get a, a consensus on our bazongas, please? Why why can't we get that in the story? What about her bazongas? I know all about her beautiful uh, pale skin. Well, let's talk about what matters here. Okay. Uh, it was so, I was so frustrated with the whole situation. Talking monkeys. You're still making a joke. You, you, we get it. Huge flying crows. Wolf women. Dot, dot, dot. I was so sick and tired of the whole thing. Would someone tell me what on earth is going on? I shouted. The woman looked over at me and shook her head as if I were the crazy one. What are you talking about? She asked. Where did this woman come from, by the way? <laughs> he, he jumped off a building and all of a sudden a woman's there. 
Ask your girl to draw her butt. Hey, can you draw something for me? I come here. I'll explain it. <laughs> She'll do it too. We're gonna we're gonna draw her with big. You guys want big old bobs? Bobs? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I need you to draw her her uh, female character, right? So so let me read the the description to you. Oh, that's fine. Whatever is most comfortable for you, my dear. Okay, you you ready for the description? Yeah. The prettiest pale skin that I've ever seen, with gorgeous brown shoulder length hair. Her eyes were delectable. Same color as her hair. The color doesn't really matter because you're drawing in pencil. Uh, she was wearing a worn light brown fedora, black boots that came to her knees. And her skinny body was covered by a tan colored jacket. But I need you specifically to draw her with gigantic bazongas. <laughs> because every, you know, okay. she left out the most important part. Yeah. Yeah. Seems that way. Yeah. Okey doke. Yeah, this is, this is my, see, I'm so lucky I have a woman to draw me fan art of the characters that I love. <laughs> oh, man. I got to my feet, grabbed my hair with my hands, and pulled it. Are you fucking kidding me? What does he say? What am I talking about? What am I talking about? <laughs> what am I talking about? This is the, who fucking writes like this? It is what the people want. I, I'm here to please, okay? I have someone with the artistic talent at my disposal. This this lovely lady. This lovely lady who, who uh, deal, deals with me screaming in this room. At video games, <laughs> I'll happily, I'll happily ask her to provide her talent for you. What am I talking? What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Talking lemurs, flying crows, wolf women. This is crazy. This has to be a dream. One huge made-up dream, right? The woman pushed me down, caused me to almost fall off the huge bird and plummet to my death. Okay. First of all, she started pointing her finger in my in my face. First of all. This is not just a flying crow. He has a name, and it's Edgar. Second of all, the wolf woman isn't a wolf. <laughs> what the fuck? Her name is Zelma, and she's a witch. What were you going to oh, say? Zelma. Zelma, with an Zelma, N. Like hey, excuse me. Sabrina. Excuse me. Are you getting the name wrong for this perfect character? Zelna, okay? Get it right. Can you believe she said Zelma? <laughs> it's like she hasn't read this book before. What a fake fan. Oh, uh, Zel uh, what does it say? Uh, Zelna and she's a witch. Okay. Is that so? I scoffed. What is your name? What powers do you have? My name is Emily and I don't have any powers. I come from a place called Rumble Twaza, which is where we're going. Okay. Romotwaza, that was the same made-up place that Lotus had told me about when I first met him. Some made-up place pl Oh my fucking god, this is... Past the grassy savannas of Africa over the border... BORDER WITH AN A! BORDER WITH AN A! It's a piece of wood, everybody! The border! Uh, border of Mexico and through the crystal clear waters of Bermuda. That doesn't make any fucking sense! Where- if this place is by Australia, how is it anywhere by Mexico? Guessing. Is this, uh, excuse me, is this pre or post Trump wall? <laughs> it sounds like pre wall, guys. Let's now, keep this political. What the, what, uh, the problem I have is why does she keep adding fedoras? I don't fucking know. What? Is what? Why is, why does the character look like Indiana Jones? I, I, don't, know. I don't understand. And wait, did you say she had a vest on or a coat? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. I think she's had a coat. Do you see how forgettable these characters are? I don't even remember what they're wearing. Uh, black boots that came up to their knees. A tan colored jacket. So take that as you will. No, uh, excuse me. The vest, if you'll remember, is Lotus's. Okay? Or a Uh, Lotus. A boo is a monkey. This is a lemur. Okay, this is a golden lemur. Not the same thing. Not the same thing at all. 
God, I can't believe her. She's embarrassing me right now. I'm talking about Abu from Aladdin. It's not even the same. We we did the side by side comparison. Not even the same. Where where's where is this guy? Where is he? It's not Neopet. Ah, fuck it. You guys get it. Rumbletoise is America. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, God. Let's see. Uh, Rumbletoise, where on earth is that? Lotus chewed my ear off about it, I replied. Emily wrapped her arm around my shoulder. She, she just... God, she's like manhandling him. She's more of a man than he is. And laughed. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, you'll sure find out, won't you? Before I could even understand what she was talking about, I felt her push me, and I fell off Edgar's back. She's just, damn, dude, she's just shoving him around. I closed my eyes and waited for my life to end, dot, 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 until I landed in a body of water. From up on Edgar's back, I saw Emily looking down at me as Lotus jumped on her shoulder and laughed at the sight of my body struggling in the water. She's just laughing at someone drowning. Ha, 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 ha! Look, he's drowning! Oh, he's gonna die! Uh, I, uh... Where do we leave off? God damn. Do you think you scared him? I heard Lotus ask her. I say we find out, laughed Emily. Ha 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 ha! Tying a long rope to one of Edgar's claws. How did she manage that? Afterwards, she slid down its length with Lotus on her shoulders as Edgar kept flying over the ocean. As I struggled to swim, I looked up and saw Emily hanging over me by the rope that was attached to one of Edgar's claws. I think, isn't this where we left off? I think it was about this. This is about as far as we got. I, I'm almost positive. I remember that she got to some island, which I guess is this place, and that was it. I don't remember anything past this. So we, we're experiencing this for the first time. Welcome, Shaquifa. It's a pleasure to have you here. I'm so sorry to put you through this. So sorry to put you through this story. My, my sincerest apologies to you. She had Lotus on her shoulder, and he laughed at the sight of me with the childish voice of his. Ha! <laughs> Emily held out her hand and lifted me out of the water as Edgar kept flying. Why did you push me, I asked. What did I do? You asked too many questions, she replied. It was from that moment that I knew I liked her, semicolon. He's in love. He just loves being manhandled. He, he's, he's, a, he's a little bit into the femdom uh, fetish. I think he likes... Uh, a nice lady with some uh, leather boots standing over him. Just have an, an inkling about this. Have an idea. You should have sat through worse. No, my friend. No, you haven't. You don't. You don't understand how bad this is. This. This is. This is written. This is cancer, in written form. Okay. I think I might shorten your lifespan by reading you this. Uh, I. I cannot take a responsibility for this. Okay? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, God. As soon as I see a semicolon, I just lose where I fucking was. And there's not even that much text. It's just that boring. Well, she was in remedial English. It's true. Reason. It's true. It, it was for her to, to hone her skills for writing this. Oh, God. Where are we? It was from that moment that I knew that I liked her. She had the most truthful way of speaking, and I loved it. Not only was she the most beautiful woman I had ever laid eyes on, but her intelligence was most intriguing. How does he How does he know she's intelligent? She called him a fucking idiot, and she shoved him. Uh, as the night fog cleared before my eyes... It's nighttime? I thought it was day. Uh, I began to see a small light from up ahead. Something was sitting on top of the water, and for some reason, I had a feeling that it was where we were headed. What's that light? I asked, dreading the thought of her pushing me into the water again. Damn, dude, they're, they're gonna have some fucking weird sadomasochistic relationship. The ship that will take us to Rumble Twaza. Edgar can't, Edgar can't get us there? I questioned. Lotus jumped onto my shoulder as I kept holding onto the rope. No, like I said before, Rumble Twaza is... Yeah, yeah, I know, I replied, rudely interrupting the annoying lemur that was on my shoulder. Oh god, she just repeats the fucking location again. I'm just gonna skip it. I, I don't want to read it again. Okay? It's true. Pretty equals smart. Uh, right, right. And it's too far for one bird to fly. Besides, Emily has our crew aboard the ship. Crew, I questioned? Yes, he assured. The Rumble Twazians. 
Within seconds, the ship came into view, and what a, sh what a ship it was. It was painted crimson red with the golden trim and white sails. The name SS Tumble was even painted in gold on the side of the ship. Before I could ask what was going to happen next, Emily grabbed hold of my shirt. Oh! And down the rope we slid. I don't, I don't think you could do that. This must be pretty strong. Lotus swung above me on the rope, yelling out like some childish Tarzan as we plummeted to the deck of the ship. When we hit the deck, Emily let go of the rope and Edgar flew away, leaving us with the most savage-looking crew I had ever seen. So Edgar's just gone, guys. Sorry to, sorry to tell you, Edgar just flew off. No one's going to take care of him. I glanced at them and, and felt like I was aboard a, a ship that belonged to Captain Hook. Oh my god. So Captain Hook exists in this made-up world. Yeah. This crew, however, wasn't dressed like any pirates I had ever seen before. Semicolon. I love semicolons, guys. Did I ever tell you? Semicolon is probably the best uh, piece of punctuation this world over. Nazdorovia. Ah. That's what I fuck that Dawson, you you have my exact mindset. This character is afraid of everything. He's a fucking pussy who's annoyed by everything. Why is he dealing with this shit? Wouldn't he be cowering in a corner? She portrays him as being so fucking angry at everything. I don't understand. Like why would you craft a character like that? You want a likable character. Yes, you want a likable character, and you want a character that goes with what what he's capable of if he's if he's made out to be this guy who's scared of fucking everything he wouldn't do this <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense it drives me insane there you go. oh you got it you got the ooh ooh she's, she's gonna be sexy too <laughs> ooh baby god damn look at this girl shit yo look at this bitch ooh she got bazongas too shit there's a fedora god damn guys <laughs> You want to jerk off later? This is to the men specifically. You guys want to jerk off later? Uh, clip this, okay? I'm gonna wait until she falls asleep. <laughs> I'm gonna save this one for myself, baby. God, Ooh, God damn, she got big ones, baby. God damn, <laughs> God damn, she look good. Oh man, listen. I just said later, uh, you know, it's a little early, but hey, you, you want to take care of yourself now? Feel free. I'm not going to stop you. Shit, she hot. She got big old titties. God damn. Woo. Okay, can I, can I have another art request? Uh-huh. Okay, can you draw the crew of this ship? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they weren't dressed like pirates. They had colorful vests draped in beads. Boots that came up to their knees. This is a recurring theme with her. Complete with trousers that were so torn you would think that they were nothing more than fashion statement. Okay, okay. so I need... This is, <laughs> this is what I need from you, okay? And you might be opposed to this. I need you to draw one pirate with his trousers so torn that his dick is coming out. <laughs> okay? Uh, that's what we need. Oh my god. We just need weird pirates. She has the worst description for characters. No one gives a shit about it's this. It's like she unconsciously put that in there that his pants were so torn because she's like, oh, maybe some stuff will pop out. Yeah, like maybe, maybe a little dick will come out. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he's got a little dick out there, huh? He's got a bunch of like Johnny Depp's. Johnny Depp's with her dicks out. That, <laughs> that's, that's essentially her. I think she watched Pirates of the Caribbean. She's like, okay, yeah. they're like this. But their pants are torn and their dick is coming out. I honestly out. think she was just watching the uh, Aladdin animated series because there were pirates in that too. So I think she was just taking pieces. That would make sense. From that cartoon show. That would make sense. Yeah, and they were they were like on different islands. They're, remember, oh, Weird Uncle Wally. That's where I got it from. Really? Because when they the genie and everybody had landed on this island, she's an animals, Aladdin expert. Yeah, just so you all know, all the animals spoke. And they all uh, like, they in their, their maybe mouth. she watched Aladdin and she fu she fucking did this. Yeah, it was it was a weird episode. But it was really good. Maybe she watched Aladdin and she stole all this shit from it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So. She's a thief. She, she does steal, so it's. It makes she sense. loves to steal. She loves to steal actual shit. Absolutely. Oh, excuse me. No, no, no. You are not late to class. 
I'm in the middle of my lecture here. Feel free to, to take a seat and enjoy. Oh, God. She really is a pirate. She really is. God damn. Okay. I glanced at them and felt like I was aboard a ship that belonged to Captain Hook. This crew, however, wasn't just like any pirates I'd ever seen before. Colorful vests draped in beads. Boots that came up to their knees. What is with this recurring theme with boots? Like, I don't understand. Is that like a fetish? Boots that come up to the knees? They weren't that common. That's more of like a, a, a woman's statement. Women wear boots that, that come up to the knee. Mm -hmm. Complete with trousers that were so torn you would think that they were nothing more than a fashion statement. I don't know what that means. I really don't... I don't understand what that fucking means. What's what's a fashion statement about torn trousers? Maybe torn jeans? I thought for sure that they were going to kill me, but when all of a sudden their looks of anger turned into looks of surprise. He's here, I heard one of the men shout. It's actually him, shouted another one. Emily dashed in front of me and waved her arms at the crew. Okay, everyone, the show's over. I brought him here, and he and he's for my father to deal with, and it better stay that way. But they're just fucking excited. She's like, hey, fuck off. My dad's got to talk to him first. Emily grabbed my arm and pulled me as we began to walk along the deck of the ship. I glanced over at the crew every so often and noticed that they were looking at me as if I were royalty. It's a little Harry Potter situation here. Yeah, I know. It does sound like standard pirate wear, doesn't it? Just just say they look like fucking pirates. They got beer, They got beads or something. That's like the only difference. Sometimes pirates don't have beads. They don't look like typical pirates. They had torn, <laughs> they had torn trousers. Their dicks were coming out. <laughs> I don't know why I'm fixated on that. Their asses were hanging out and their dicks were hanging out. They're, they weren't like typical pirates who, who covered themselves up. Oh, God. Um, it was then that we ended up in a room lit by candlelight with burning incense that smelled of peaches what this shop of fucking uh pure one <laughs> <laughs> on the windowsill sat a red pillow and when lotus laid down on it i realized that it was his bed emily sat me down on the bed below the windowsill and took off her hat so that her brown curls could bounce from her shoulders where are we why is the crew looking at me so weird i had so many questions that I didn't even know where to start. Well, you already did. You already asked a question, so you've just begun. You, you don't have to worry about where to start. Uh, she looked at me in the eyes, and when she told me she was nothing... Uh, what she told me was nothing more than unbelievable. Augie, you're more famous than you know. She watched Harry Potter, and she's like, I'm gonna... That's a, that's a good little tidbit. I would tell you, but I'm prohibited to say anything until my father speaks with you. Famous, I question. Your crew looked at me as if I were their king. It's complicated, Augie, but my father will tell you everything. Father? Who is your father? I curiously asked. He's the king. The king of Rumble Twaza. I was going all the way from Sydney to meet the king of Rumble Twaza. Therefore, I knew I wasn't in the presence of a girl named Emily. I was in the presence of a princess. You're a princess? Yes, that would be correct. And who is the prince? I laughed. <laughs> Lotus? I watched Lotus glare over at me and laugh once more like an uncontrollable child. Why did he glare first? <laughs> just from a glare to a laugh that doesn't make any sense uh what i said must have made emily very angry due to the fact that she scurried to her feet and grabbed her hat in anger you're not funny augie atwell not funny at all and until you start treating me like the princess i am i will not stand to be in your presence emily rushed out of the room but not before slamming the door shut on her way out lotus however kept laughing at whatever he thought was so funny until i could take i couldn't take it anymore and shouted at him do you mind you sound like an annoying child I've only said it every single time I've described you. He stopped laughing and stretched out on the red pillow, not making another sound. Why are you here in here anyway? Is this not my room? I was give it was given to me by the so-called princess herself, I said, knowing that I had probably insulted him. You still think this is a big made-up game, don't you? You do realize that you insulted the princess of Rumble Twaza? The king will The king will surely punish you for it. Also, she spelled it surly. The king will surely punish you for it. Oh, I'm so scared with three O's, I sarcastically said, in case you didn't know. Not, you know, the three O's didn't make that apparent. I sarcastically said, lying down on the bed. Ooh, nice rhyme, baby. You should make a, a poetry book next. You still don't understand. You still don't understand that Selma is after us, do you? Lotus questioned with such fright in his voice. All I could ask myself was, who is Zelna? And what on earth did she want? Okay, enlighten me. Who is <laughs> Just fucking ask them. Let's say you're going to ask. It was at that moment that Lotus jumped onto my chest and grabbed me by the shirt, pulling me into his face. This is a strong lemur, guys. Who is she? Who is she? 
Zelda is the wicked witch of Rumble Twaza. She's the same woman who transformed into the wolf back in your room. I think I thought we already knew this. She can change into anything that she desires, which is why the king sent for you. Why didn't she transform into something bigger and inescapable? What does she want? Lotus let go of my shirt and stretched his body across his pillow. You'll find out soon enough, he knowingly assured. For some odd reason, Lotus seemed very upset. But I did not dare continue the conversation. Instead, I closed my eyes and let her s and let sleep take over, hoping that maybe in the morning I would wake up and would would all be what? And this would all be nothing more than a silly nightmare. God, just again, fucking keep talking about how it's a nightmare. A bejeweled fedora. Oh man. Harry, Augie is a loner stuck in a terrible home life who gets uprooted by Hagrid, Lotus, and whisked away into a world of adventure they could never dream of at Hogwarts, Rumble Tawasa. <laughs> that was my theory from the beginning that it was Harry Potter because he's got the round glasses and everything too. Oh, yeah. He's the chosen one. It's so stupid, man. Her name was Zelna. I don't know why she chose that name. I don't think she plays video games. She doesn't play video games, does she? No. She never played Zelda. Yeah, I don't know why she chose Zelna. Play, like, the Lion King or something. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so what, what were they wearing again? Like, torn up pants? What about the tops and stuff? Uh, I don't think we, I don't think they said much. Uh, let's see. Colorful, colorful vest draped in beads. Boots up to their knees, like the finest young ladies that you would see, uh, in the strip club, baby. Uh, I think that was it. And then the torn trouser, trousers. God, I, I'm starting to slur my words. I've had so many shots. Okay. Of of iced tea, guys. Of iced tea. I Hand on my heart. Okay. Harry Potter had to live under a staircase. Augie had to listen to his co-workers and invite him to card games. God, dude, so many parallels here. Oh, God. Lotus is Hagrid. A little tiny, hairier Hagrid. No, Le the lemur isn't Hedwig. I don't know who we would say is Hedwig in this. Maybe the fucking bird that they wrote on. I have no idea, man. Oh, man. Yeah, they had beads. They had beads on the vests. I had to reread it because it's that, it's that forgettable. Like, you don't remember anything about these characters. On the vests. Have you ever seen that before? description no not like okay they're shiny or they're um like gold or whatever she doesn't have any no description. Just no like, colors or not. green walls weird pictures <laughs> there, there's nothing else she does not know how to describe anything <sighs> nothing at all it's very frustrating oh god let's see the loud sounds of the waves came crashing up against the outside of my room and, uh, and woke me up following the following morning. I glared over at Lotus to notice that he was still fast asleep on the red pillow. The red pillow is very important. The color of the pillow is very important. But God forbid we know what the fucking pirates look like other than having beads. Uh, that was placed on the windowsill. Figuring that it was better to let him sleep, I walked out into the hall to explore my surroundings. Or in this case, find someone that I knew. You don't know any fucking buddy here. I had hoped to wake up and be back in my own room, but obviously I was still stuck on this horrible nightmare. Guys, it's a nightmare. It's a dream. 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 The The hallway, the hallways were better looking than the ones in my complex. Well, obviously you fucking hated that shit, at least when it came to the decorating. Yes, the walls might have been just made of old beech wood, but it was better than the bright green wallpaper. Now it's bright green. Uh, after climbing the stairs to reach the top deck, I found only Emily with her back turned as she steered the ship in whichever direction Rumble told the way. She's, she's the captain of the ship? I thought she was a princess. I still thought that she was the most beautiful girl I had ever laid eyes on. Well, bazongas like that. I don't fucking blame you, dude. Even if she thought I was a jerk, I cleared my throat on purpose so that she would turn around. And when she did, I bowed in front of her like any other noble person in the presence of a princess uh, would do. She seemed surprised by my actions, especially because of how I had treated her the night before. You may rise, I heard her command. I did as I was told and stood beside her, trying to figure out what to say without insulting her. She, on the other hand, just stood there in silence, steering the ship, uh, still dressed in her rugged coat and hat. 
So tell me what a princess is doing on her ship. Shouldn't you be sitting in a castle somewhere being treated like royalty, I asked her. You may rise. Oh, God. It seemed as though I had insulted her once more just by the disgraceful look that came upon her face. I was ever, uh, I was never too good at talking to women. Well, no shit, dude. You, you're fucking incel. Because the truth was, I'd never risk speaking to anyone. I was too afraid of rejection. I guess all those years of avoiding conversation with them was now finally paying off. Royalty, she angrily snapped. Royalty? You have been living in some fantasy world, Atwell. In Rumble Twaza, royalty is proven by showing bravery. My father's father fought in battle and almost died before taking the throne. That, in Rumble Twaza, is what royalty is made of. Not sitting on the throne and being waited on hand and foot. She's, she's very upset that he didn't know uh, about the history of this land that doesn't, you know, that, that no one knows exists. It, 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 she's justified. It confused me so much because I was used to seeing royalty as sitting on a throne, not being out on a ship and battling wolf women. She was just a girl no older than me, so why on earth would a king put his daughter in so much danger? You're just a girl, though. She'll like that one. I stated, why not send out a son? <laughs> This is written by a woman, by the way. Very empowering for women. Because I am the king's only child, someday when I prove my bravery, I will take the throne. Just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I'm not brave. She had a point. She was very brave. I was lucky enough to survive the jump out the window, <laughs> let alone the ride on Edgar or this boat voyage. Uh, beyond the ship was tall golden grass that swayed in the wind. We just cut to the grass, you know. There's not more to this conversation. Girls can game, too. It's true. <laughs> Girl gamers, rise up. Uh, along with zebras running along the water's edge. Where are we, I asked. Oh, my fuck. He's going to say it again. He's going to say it again. He's going to say it again. Where are we, I asked, gazing into the beauty of my surroundings. The grassy savannas of, Afri of Africa, she replied. We've been going through it mostly all night. How would you see the savannas from the ocean? Isn't that kind of inland? Not that good at geography, but uh, just just assuming here. The next stop is the border of Me Why are you gonna say the border of Mexico from the fucking ocean? And then the crystal clear waters of Bermuda. All I could think about was the witch that Lotus had told me about the night before. What did she want with the beautiful en Emily? And why did she want to harm Lotus? Before I was able to speak, the sky turned into a dark gray cloud, and the sound of thunder shook the surface we walked on. From behind us, the sound of stampeding on land made me quiver as it came closer and closer. We've been spotted, I heard Emily shout, and I turned around to spot a black cloud getting closer and closer to the back end of the ship. So she watched James and the Giant Peach. I wasn't sure what was happening, and all I could uh, do was stand, on, uh, stand still and scream in fear. That's a cool protagonist. Take the wheel, she shouted. Take the wheel, Augie! You can see the savannah from the Mexican border. It's true. It just need a little bit of a telescope. But we did see all that fan art of the telescope, so that's probably it. I'd, I'd bet my life on it. I didn't, and stood there, uh, stood there as still as could be, waiting for whatever it was to emerge from the, the dark cloud. From the corner of my eye, Lotus jumped out from what seemed like nowhere and grabbed the wheel. Move over! Move over! I'll make a monkey's uncle out of this ship! Get it, guys? Oh, get it? He's a he's a lemur. Do you get it? Uh, he called, running on all fours and making the wheel spin round and round. Now, here's, here's the thing, because I just had this thought. It would be fine if your character is a coward and afraid of everything, if you're going to redeem him and give him qualities that make him likable. But this character is neither likable nor brave. So what exactly are we trying to get out of him here? He just sucks. He can't do anything. He's scared of everything. And he has a terrible personality. So is he going to get... Is he going to become a cool guy? And brave? I don't know. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, Emily ran away and let Lotus steer the ship, which was now spinning in endless circles. <laughs> it's just spinning! From out of the cloud came something worse than the wolf I had seen in my apartment. The stampeding was being caused by a giant elephant that was charging into the ship with its... Isn't this sh... What? We're on the ocean! W was being caused by a giant elephant that was charging into the ship with its tusks, pointed straight towards the bowel. You mean the bow? She put bowel? She put bowel. 
the the ship's bowels. The ship's gonna shit all in the ocean. From all over the ship, I watched as the crew, including Emily, raced to lower the sails as I stood there doing nothing. <laughs> doing nothing. He's just admitting that he's a fucking useless character. Anybody could be there. They would be better. The ship's tummy. <laughs> yes. Oh man, give that give that ship some uh, some Pepsi AC, dude. He's got some bowel problems. It's Zelna, I heard Lotus shout as he kept spinning the wheel. The ship's just spinning around and around. I was sure it was all over, and within seconds, it was. Once Zelna collided into the ship with her tusks, the ship began to take on water from the newly enormous hole, causing it to... Did she hit the bowels, though? Did she hit the ship in its asshole? Causing it to begin sinking as she kept colliding into it. Lotus was in my face in seconds, pulling my hair to get my attention. Abandoned ship! He cried out to everyone. Abandoned ship! I watched the crew jump into the water. And all I had to do was give its swampy appearance one look. What? Swampy? Swampy ocean? To change my mind. Are there swamps in Africa? There might be. I don't know. I'm Like I said, I'm very bad at geography. Once more, Lotus was in my face to tell me otherwise. Hello! He shouted. <laughs> to tell me otherwise. Hello! Pulling my hair to get me to move. I said abandoned ship! That means jump! Zelna's tusks were now literally inches away from me as the ship continued sinking. I soon realized that Lotus was not going to let me stay. Why would you want to? You're going to fucking die. I soon realized that Lotus was not going to let me stay, so I did as I was told and jumped into the swampy water. Slime now covered every inch of my body as Lotus and I made it to the gra to the grass to hide. He stuck his paw up to his mouth to signal me, hello, Yuki, uh, to be quiet before moving aside some of the tall grass to have a look at the ship. Yuki, do you want to come up and say hello? Uh, you guys want to see Yuki, the, the crying boy? Here's the the white son, the white boy, the mascot of the stream, right? Yuki, say hello to the camera. There he is. He won't howl now. He'll he'll just stay here. He'll probably stay in my lap now, which will make it very difficult to read, but it's fine. You know, I gotta give the people what they want. I'll read with this with this large cat on me. Oh my god. He might get scared too if I yell. Yeah, he's just he's just gonna lie here now. Uh he stuck his paw up to his mouth to signal me to be quiet before moving aside some of the tall grass to have a look at the ship. Zelna was still charging into what was left of it, soon to be searching for us. We had to find Emily and the crew, he whispered ever since We have to find Emily! I'm so sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep these voices up. Uh, he whispered ever... We have to, we have to uh, find Emily and the crew, he whispered ever so softly. Staying with Lotus was the worst choice I could have made. Not because he was a furry animal or anything. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to be you know racist towards animals. But because he was a monkey. Can we fucking get over this joke? Yuki, can we... Yuki, can we get over this joke? Even he's sick of it and he just got here. Right? You get sick of it. Here, here's a, like, Ooh, we got terrible, that's some artwork, guys. Terrible pirate. All right, guys, this is these are the pirates. This, this is what the pirates look like. All right, you ready for this? <laughs> like he's got his dick coming out. <laughs> this is one of the pirates. Just so you have some context, and you know, because sometimes it's hard to imagine what these characters look like. This is the pirate. That's his dick coming out. He's got his torch. What is he? He's got a keep. And a scarf. <laughs> Isn't a scarf that made this I think you made it. Or maybe that's the vest. I guess that's the beaded I vest. I but, his, really but I want you to just focus on the dick, really. <laughs> He's got his dick coming out because his, his pants are torn. You know, he doesn't have he doesn't have the, the best uh, stuff. God. Best style. Do, do you guys have any requests oh my God. for for uh, the, the lady to draw from this story? It has to be related to the story, okay? He's a very sweet boy, but he's also not good. He's also a bad boy. He's also my my very bad boy who bites, but right now he's very content. Are you purring? You're not purring, but you're very happy though, I could tell. Draw the ship's bowels. Can you draw the ship's bowels? Oh can, can you draw the ship shitting into the ocean, please? <laughs> While an elephant is chasing it? Is, it, is that what you read? An elephant? She, she apparently turned into an elephant and was chasing a ship in the water. 
Hey. So the ship needs to shit, <laughs> and then the, an elephant needs to be chasing it. Oh. But it's a witch, so you have to put an, uh, a, a, hat? a witch's hat. Yes, on the. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a pissing moomin? No, there's no pissing moomin in the story. Now you're just now you're making fan fiction. Oh God! The only thing the protagonist has done has gotten fired and thrown the animal around. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty much the story. Yeah, he's just been dragged around after that. He doesn't do anything. I, I don't know if he gets better later on, but I doubt it. He is a very good bad boy. I would agree with this. He's he's very happy right now. You guys want to see his face? This is the mascot of my stream. My my son. Yuki, say something. He wanted to, but he got shy. He got very shy. He's very content right now. This is exactly what he wants. This is the kind of attention he wants. Isn't it? Huh? I'm so sorry he has to be here listening to this fucking terrible tale. He won't howl. He'll howl if he's in the... in the. Oh, he's gonna leave. There he goes. Yeah, the door has to be closed or he has to be in the hallway for him to howl. That's the, Those are the prerequisites for howling. Do you guys want to see a Tomoya? I've shown you Taiga, I've shown you Yuki. You want to see the longest boy? I'll show you him before I continue. He's still roaming around. He's still here. He just he, he got upset that I showed him to you. Let me show you the, the longest boy, okay? Where is Tomoy? Is he in the living room? Either there or the bedroom. Long son, where are you? He's probably on the, on the couch. Oh, there's another long boy. Properly in frame, you need to understand how long this cat is, okay? So he's, here's me. Here's this boy. Okay? Ugh. Here's the Tomoya. The longest son of all. The star of the stream. Aww. He's so big. He won't stay. He will absolutely not stay. He hates it. He does not like being held. He will only stay if it's under his own terms. <laughs> Why the long cat? He'll he'll stay if he is the one who has decided to. How do you get so long? I don't know. Uh, he's a mutant. He's always a long boy. He's the best for Tomo. Let me try to get Taiga to stay in here. We need a cat in this room to just stick around. A single cat. You gonna start crying, Yuki? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see if you stay here. Let's see if you stay. Huh? Scooch Tomo, I don't wanna hit you. With the chair. Here we've got the girl, my daughter, first of her name. She'll probably leave too. She gets shy. Yep, she's gone. That's it. Cats can't take the story. I wouldn't want them to, honestly. It's it's just too much. It's not good for their health. Uh, oh my God, where did we fucking leave off? Uh, there. Oh yeah, the monkey part. Oh Jesus Christ. There I was. Oh god, I got cat hair on me again. Do you see this happening behind me? Oh my god. Now he's gonna want to be in front here. I'll 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 move so you can see this happen. He wants to be a star. Alright. You'd much rather see him than me on stream, honestly. He's he's much more interesting than I am. There I was, standing in the grass that was ten times taller than I was. How tall is this grass? Ten times taller. So let's assume he's like, let's say five foot ten. Ten times taller than five foot ten? F Fifty foot ten? How fucking tall is this grass, man? Jesus Christ. Uh, then I was. And where was Lotus? Dot, dot, dot. He was swinging through the trees, of course. I tried to keep... Uh, how could he swing through the trees if the grass is so tall? He was just get caught in it. 
I tried to keep up with him, pushing the grass out of my way while I was watching him shrink, uh, swing from tree to tree. I could be getting eaten by lions, and he was safe up in the trees. Uh, from up in the sky, a dark shadow passed over me, and as I look up, looked up, I saw Edgar flying. Damn, dude, so he could get to fucking Rumble Twaza. Why did they leave the bird? Uh, Edgar flying right past us. Lotus waved his arms and began to swing faster from tree to tree, making it harder for me to keep up with him. Wait! Wait for me, Lotus! I shouted, trying to convince him to slow down. It was no use, though, and I found myself alone in the tall, golden grass, wondering if I... Everything's golden in this fucking story, dude. Uh, wondering if I had, was ever going to see him or Emily ever again. I missed my room, my job, even Jerry, who I totally couldn't tolerate on a regular basis. Um, as I kept running, Lotus finally swung down from a branch and pulled my hair to stop me from going any further. He laughed as he did so, making me more frustrated. Uh, okay, Tomo's gone. Back to me, everybody. Sorry. Sorry. You get me now. Uh, making me more frustrated than I had ever been before. I was hot, tired, co oh, come on, don't compliment yourself too much. Covered in slime and just got scared out of my wits. I have good news and bad news, he replied. Which is, which is what? What? The good news is that I found Emily and she's making a U-turn with Edgar. A U-turn? <laughs> with a fucking bird? <laughs> she's making a U-turn right now. With Edgar, right? <laughs> It's the only way she could describe it. In the, city. In, the, in, the, in the city, in the sky. And what's the bad news, I asked. F uh, faster than lightning, Lotus was back in the tree and hopping from branch to branch. You better start running, he called, disappearing into the bush, into the brush. Shouldn't he be more concerned about his safety since he's important? I don't know, man. Dude, I, I've had so much Jim Beam already. I started with a, I started with a full bottle. This is how many semicolons there were. I was taking a half... Uh, a half a shot for every semicolon. That's how many semicolons are in this fucking shit. Wrong semicolons, by the way. Okay? Without another word, I glanced over my shoulder and spotted Zelna, charging straight towards me with her tusks pointed out. And this is only the second chapter, mind you. There were three semicolons in the prologue, which is three pages. I never ran so fast in my entire life. I was running so fast that at that moment, I felt faster than a cheetah. I only hoped I wouldn't run into one. Faster and faster I ran as Zelna continued catching up to me. Finally, from overhead, I spotted Edgar's shadow, and when it was hovered above me, a rope was lowered. When I looked up, I saw Emily standing on his back, holding the rope as Lotus clung to it with his hand stretched out to me. A, a fucking lemur is going to pull you up, huh? Hurry up, Augie! Yelled oh, no, that's Emily. I'm sorry, guys. Hurry up, Augie! Yelled Emily from above. Don't let her catch you. I kept running faster and faster to catch up to Lotus so I could grab his hand, but I couldn't seem to get close enough. At last, I grabbed onto Lotus's hand. <laughs> oh, my God. Just as Zelna was right behind me. Your hands are wetter than a soggy banana. Sh Your hands are wetter than a soggy banana, shouted Lotus as Emily began to pull us up. I'm surprised no one laughed at that. As as she was, Zelna caught her tusk on the back of my pants, causing them to tear. Ooh. Uh -oh. Ooh. I think I'm going to need you to draw that scene next. I want to see some Augie ass. Uh, to tear just as uh, Edgar flew us out of harm's way. Once we were <laughs> high in the sky and Zelna became just the blur, Lotus... Why does it just turn into a fucking airplane or some shit? She can turn into anything, right? Or does it have to be an animal? Turn into a faster bird. It'll be fine. Lotus let go of my hand and began to laugh at my torn pants. He just laughed at his ass. Everything about them was fine except for the butt, which was torn, leaving only my tidy whities showing. Did she really write that? She really wrote that. Oh my god. Except for the butt, which was torn, leaving only my tidy whities wow. showing. I need you to draw that after this. I, no. I absolutely need to see this. It's not funny, Lotus, I reminded him as he grabbed his stomach and continued laughing. Emily didn't show any emotion at all, and I couldn't help feeling feel couldn't help feel embarrassed about the whole situation. Where's everyone else at? I asked, looking around to see if any of the Rumble Twajans were riding with us. It's only us now, Emily stated. So all the pirates are fucking dead. They all took on water. Can't worry about them. Leave them behind. Looking to see if there were... Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Wrapping up the rope that she had used to save me. Everyone else was taken by Zelda. When? She's one person. Uh, she'll turn into a bird soon enough, and then we'll be taken as well, I shouted, my voice filled with fear. Chill out, Augie. 
Chill out, Augie, Lotus exclaimed. She can't turn into a bird and she can't fly. Luckily, that's the power she doesn't possess. So she can turn into everything but a fucking bird. You got you got art? Guys, do you want to see the, the bowels of the ship? Here we go. I need, okay. I need you to draw Augie getting his ass torn up and with his tidy whities and, and Lotus belly laughing. Okay? <laughs> Can you see this? It says crap ship and there's shit coming out of it. That's that's the bowel of the ship, okay? And this is Zelna, the elephant. The giant elephant with the witch's hat. <laughs> oh god, this sucks. This sucks so bad. You know, part of me wishes you had just drawn a butt on the back of the ship. <laughs> like 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 the plumbus oh, or something. God. Like some some Rick and Morty shit. Uh, well, I'm <sighs> Oh, I know. No, you're doing great. Believe me. Everybody, please applaud my my lady for her efforts because she she is drawing this very fast. Oh God. I, I it said his butt was torn, but then it said tidy whitey. So I have no fucking ideas. Everybody's clapping for you. You're being applauded right now. Oh God. Hello, Tomo. I was just confused over the whole situation. Why could this witch turn into elephants and wolves, but not into something as simple as a bird? Why was she after Lotus and me? In addition, why on earth was I being taken to some made-up place called Rumble Twaz? Also, if she's a fucking wolf, how did she make it to them when they're taking a bird to, to fly somewhere? She wouldn't be able to catch up. This doesn't make sense. I don't get this. It didn't matter what I wanted to know because Emily, the most gorgeous girl I had ever laid eyes on, still refused to tell me what was going on. We stayed on Edgar's back for the remainder of the day uh, as we flew high above the border of Mac. Oh my fucking god, dude. High above the border. I'm going to remove a boo right now. And put a boo right here just for reference. There you go. Um... As we moved high above the border of Mexico, which looked like nothing more than yellow sand in a desert. That's the border of Mexico, guys. The only reason I knew that it was Mexico uh, we were flying over was because Lotus pointed it out to me while jumping up and down in excitement. I couldn't help but begin to feel sick. To feel air sick. Endless hours of flying on the back of a huge crow that would dive through the clouds was causing my stomach to churn. Once night fell, the bright sky turned into a dark portal that was decorated in billions of white specks. Oh, come on, dude. Don't use that kind of language. <laughs> We're in Mexico. Have some humility. I had to admit that seeing the the sky this way was something I had never expected to see. You had never expected to see some stars. I had never ridden in a plane, nor did I plan on there doing so go. on ever There's doing so travesty thank you so much kitchen. for the 20 months a glass broke down bless in you the I have to go to the draw a boo as a lever she already did down. she drew she drew him twice there's not much difference sadly the mexican australian border dude we should get trump to put that fucking border up damn that would take forever then that, 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 then he really would need funding because of how dangerous it was now that i was probably the only human who who was what now that I was probably about the only human being who was who has ridden on the back of my god, I'm struggling through this. Who has ridden on the back of a large crow? I think you're the only fucking human being who's done that. I guess riding in an airplane couldn't possibly be as bad as this. I looked up on Edgar's head to spot Emily sitting there with her hat pulled over her eyes. I was sure that she wasn't sleeping, but if she was, I didn't want to disturb her. It was at the, that point that I felt discomfort from inside of uh, inside of my once new shoes. After taking it off my foot and shaking it, I spotted a large stone. I spotted a large stone fall out. I figured that it had probably gotten lodged in the sole of my shoe. From all that running, I did back in Af <laughs> back in Africa. As I threw it over the side of Edgar, I heard a loud splash occur. Before I could even wonder where the heck we were, I heard Emily's voice. We're flying over the, the crystal clear waters of Bermuda. It won't be long now. Hearing this made my stomach churn even more. For we were almost to Rumble Twaza, and I was sure that it was where I would probably be roasted over a spit until well done. 
there was no way I was being taken to some made-up place for a good reason. In my mind, it was I was certain that this was some kind of made-up dream that I would wake up from. Oh my god, again with the fucking dream references. I swear to Christ, man. I know! It's a f <laughs> they're on a giant crow! Oh, man. It was absolutely copy-pasted. It's the same... It's, it's the same thing, man. Because the same things are capitalized. Emily was right when she said it wouldn't be long now because just as the sun was coming up over the horizon, I began to see the excitement on Lotus's face. There it is! Th there it is! There it is! shouted Lotus, jumping up and down in excitement. I stood up and looked ahead to see a small island approaching. It was covered in tall tropical trees that were so thick that you couldn't see anything else but their leaves. Land ahoy, Atwell! Oh, no, never, never mind. That was Emily, guys. That wasn't Lotus. I'm, I'm so sorry. I looked at her, completely confused as to why she was saying this to me when we haven't even landed yet. We haven't even landed yet, Emily! Why are you saying that to me? Why are you fucking saying this and then repeating it, but in quotation? It's literally the same thing. Just say it. Just say it. You don't have to type it out, too. I mean, listen, listen to the sentence. I looked at her completely confused as to why she was saying this to me when we hadn't even landed yet. Then there's a quote. We haven't even landed yet, Emily. Why are you saying this to me? Oh, it's so painful, man. Before I could even have time to react, she jumped down from Edgar's head and pushed me straight off of him. Just as we were flying over Rumbletwaza, I screamed ah! as I fell through the air into the thick canopy of tropical treetops because you would survive that. When I landed, my fall was broken by a by a tall sand dune that I immediately slipped off. Of. I thought we jumped in the trees. Guess not. That I immediately slipped off of seconds after landing. When I opened my eyes and rolled over onto my back, all I could see uh, was where I had fallen from. Then, before I even blinked, a bunch of heads were looking there, uh, were there looking up, looking down upon me. They were. <laughs> Let's see this description. They were ugly-looking people, some with bones in their noses. Oh, this is some racist shit. With bones in their noses and others with red paint all over their faces. Can you... I, I need you to draw these people after this. They've got bones in their noses, okay? The men were all dressed in boots and brown... What is with this boot thing and brown trousers? With rugged brown vests covering their chests, the women who weren't any prettier were all dressed in brown skirts that looked as if they were made of bark and tops that were not any better looking. What is with all these ugly people in this? Everything was so dark because of the thick canopy of tropical trees that covered the island, making the earliest of afternoons seem like the dead of night. Well, it's morning. How would you know this? They looked down upon me uh, as if I had done something wrong, ready to pounce on me at any second. It was at that moment that a few of them grabbed hold of me as if I were some sort of savage and hauled me away. I was certain that they were taking me to some sort of volcano to pass me off as an offering to their gods. I closed my eyes, waiting, uh, waiting for the agony to end and, and for this dream to be finally over. Oh my god. Uh, that was... <laughs> do you hear her agony? That was until I felt myself being tossed and opened my eyes to see myself lying in front of a throne the throne was made out of the most beautiful driftwood i had ever seen because i don't think that's a very difficult statement to make it's got to be pretty nice driftwood uh, that i'd ever seen and looked as if it had been there for thousands and thousands of years because wood would last that long oh just petrified driftwood on the throne uh s sat an older man dressed in worn brown what's with the brown trousers can we stop Brown trousers and a vest. It's just vests and trousers. It's the only clothing she's ever fucking seen in her life. Always trousers. Always brown vests. Every fucking time. Always fedoras. What is this? Oh, she watched Indiana Jones. She's like, every character Every character has to look like this. On top of his bald head sat a crown made of driftwood and was decorated in seashells from the island. It was then that I realized that I was in the presence of a king. Beside him stood Emily with Lotus perched up upon her, uh, upon her shoulder. She was standing perfectly still, watching her father closely. We didn't establish that this was the father, but he'll tell us. Suddenly the king stood up and everyone bowed, semicolon, everyone except for me. <laughs> I know he doesn't give a shit about anything he's so cool he's such a nihilist he's scared of everything and he doesn't give a shit about anything at the same time he could be in an episode of Rick and Morty he's my my insert character he's so cool dude 
Oh, God. Yeah, beads. Beads are another thing. Jesus. The king walked forward and stood right in front of me. Uh, wait, I think I skipped something. Uh, everyone except for me. The king walked forward and stood right in front of me, taking his hand and pulling my jaw forward. Damn, dude, he wants to kiss him right on the lips. Taking his hand and pulling my jaw forward as he continued to examine my face. He's just, just looking... I was so afraid to move that I just kept standing there, letting him do as he wished. He just kissed him right in the lips. He tongued him, stuck that tongue right in, licked the, the, the roof of his mouth, licked his tongue. My God, he just made the fuck out with him because he's the king. He's, just, he's too scared to do anything. Once he released my jaw, the king looked at his peasants and signaled them to rise. Rise, my children, for my daughter Emily has brought us, he, brought us he chosen one. She made a, a little mistake here. He chosen one. Yes, my children, our son has returned. All the savage islanders begin to hoot and chant out in celebration as if they had just won the world... What? As if they had just won the world revolution. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> won the revolution. You remember, you remember when the French revolution <laughs> was won? Ugh. <sighs> The mouth was like a swamp. Once, <laughs> once the king took his seat on the throne once more, I tried to back up, but the islanders stopped me. So are you going to eat me, I quivered, or sacrifice me to your god? The king laughed a big, mighty laugh and looked straight at me. Eat you? Sacrifice you to our god? You can't be serious, Augie. How do you know my name, I asked. There is not a rumble twajian on the island who doesn't know your name. It's a Harry Potter syndrome. You were Augie Atwell. Your mother's name was Hannah and your father's name was Morton. What a fucking terrible name. Morton, what a nerd. Semicolon. God damn. God. I know all these savages hooting. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, God. Hooten with semicolons. Hooten with Putin. Oh, God. The bones in their noses. It's like the most fucking generic Looney Tunes description of a tribal. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, they lived here with us on the island. My, my parents left me on a doorstep when I was a baby. You're lying to me. The king seemed to smile as his golden eyes. Again with the gold. Again with the gold. Who has golden eyes? Who? Never took their gaze off me. He's just checking them out. It was then that he stood up on his feet and began to walk towards me once more. I knew that I had offended him by denying what he had told me about my parents. Once he was back in my personal space, he just he's right in front of him. <laughs> he's in his personal space. <laughs> he's just in his fucking face. Oh god. I know who has a golden eye! Play yeah, just about to say the same thing. Fucking James Bond hiding in the bathroom with his golden gun. With his golden eye fixed on the door. Uh yes, I'm doing shots every semicolon. I've I've d i have i must have done at least twenty by now. Uh, half shots though, to be to be fair. But this this was full when I started, and we're only on chapter two, okay? Just just to put it in perspective. Uh, you got it? What, what was this again? What did I ask you to draw? Lotus is laughing at Augie. As, and as, oh my god! <laughs> you guys you guys ready for this fan art? Can you... Uh, oh my god. Uh, let me think. Oh my god. Before I show you this, I gotta think of the next one. Can you draw the king holding his face? <laughs> like right in front of him? And he, he just wants like, to... Hog, holding Augie's face like this. Oh my god. Like right up to his lips. And his tongue going <laughs> what into does his the mouth. King look like? I don't even think we got a description. I don't think I remember anything. Uh an older man dressed in worn brown Hey, hey, you're, you're, you're gonna be surprised by this description. We've never heard this before. Brown leather trousers and a vest much like the one everyone else was wearing. The king wears the same clothes as the peasants, guys. Same thing. On top of his bald head sat a, crown, sat a crown made of driftwood and was decorated in seashells. And that's it. That's the whole description of him. But I want him to be kissing, just about kissing Augie. Okay, guys, are you ready for Augie, his ripped ass, his ripped butt with his tidy whities and Lotus laughing? 
Hold on, let me move this out of the way. Here we go. This is official fan art of Augie's tidy whities I made them hearts because I think that's what was really under there. I think there were hearts under there too, but he'd probably be scared of them. And Lotus is just laughing his ass off at this. See that? And there's his butt. He's pretty upset about this one. <laughs> he's pretty. He's pretty mad about this one. This is this is top notch fan art. I will show all of this at the end of the stream. I promise. Barney, thank you so much for the raid, my man. Welcome to the worst DJ night of DJ Baby D. Okay, thanks for the follow. Oh, Get out now. Thank you for the story. 20 months, my man. Thank you so much. Love you too, bud. Oh, man, you, you are going to so regret being here. All of you are going to regret. I'm reading the worst fucking book ever, okay? Uh, God, where did we leave off? I'm also taking shots every, or half shots every semicolon. Because there's a lot of them. And we're only in chapter two. It's pretty good. Let me see here. Uh, uh, where did we leave off? Where's the fucking semicolon I just drank to? The king seemed to smile as his golden eyes never took their gaze off me. It was then that he stood up on his feet and began to walk towards me once more. Oh no, I think I think I think she wanted to show me fan art. I knew that I had offended him by denying uh, what he had told me about my parents. Once he was back in my person, <laughs> my personal space, just fucking in front of his face. Once he was back in my personal space, uh, his eyes burned into my skull as if trying to stare into my soul. I think it's time you knew the truth, the truth about you and your parents. He replied, patting me on the back. I don't oh. think that I'm in my, I'm in your personal space. Hold on, let me get it in frame. I think it's time you knew about your, your parents. <laughs> uh, the islanders knelt before their king as he retook his seat on the throne. Before this crazy dream went any further, I had to know who this so-called king was. You fucking already said it was her father! I don't, she doesn't remember her own continuity. Uh, just who are you, I asked, sounding as if I were some sort of law enforcement. Ooh, what a tough guy. I heard everyone from behind me gasp in such disgrace, as if I had offended their king in the worst way possible. Who am I? He repeated in a sarcastic tone of voice. Who am I? Who am I? I'm Zumble Rumble Twaza, ruler of this island. Oh I'm sorry I didn't know. Do you hear these groans from the side? You're so sick of this, aren't you? I am the great, 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 and this is real. This is not an exaggeration. This is actually in this book, this many greats. I'm not exaggerating this. Are you ready? I am the great, 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 great grandson of our founder, Tumble Rumble Twaza. My father was ruler, just as his father before him, and his father before him, and so on and so forth. This is real. This is not exaggerated. Uh, we are the Rumble Twajans, and this is our island where we live. And my parents lived here, I asked. I think that it is time you knew the truth about your past, said the king. I was then forced to take a seat and listen to the first and only story about my parents that I had ever heard. Dot, dot, dot. We've just completed chapter two, everybody. We've just completed chapter two. We're up to chapter three. We're only 60 pages into this piece of garbage. What are your thoughts? Should I? Can you pass me the stuff you've drawn so far? I'm going to give you guys a little refresher of the fan art that, that my, my, my dear lady has drawn here for your viewing pleasure. And please, please give her a round of applause so far for all the effort she's put in. She, she's uh, taking her day off to draw this art. That she is not, that she doesn't, she shouldn't have to be drawing. All right, let's, <laughs> all right, so here's some fan art of Augie Atwell and Lotus. What is, what is the context of this? When, when did this happen? Um, it was just his, like, initial meeting and oh. how he's been treating him. Okay, so this is when they first met. This is the initial meeting. Um, this is exactly how it happened, okay? Very good stuff. I'll probably remember the rest of these without an issue. This is uh, Lotus the Lemur's uh, disgusted look. Was it a disgusted look? Yeah, he was giving him like a... He was giving him a dirty look. I think that was the phrasing, okay? <laughs> this is his dirty look, and as you can see, he's he's calling him a bastard. <laughs> I love that you made you gave him like an Amish beard. <laughs> an Amish beard. 
He looks like he has an Amish Abe Lincoln beard as a lemur. Uh, this is Augie Atwell meeting, and this is how it was described in the book, the disgusting old woman uh, in his hallway. And he also has an Amish beard. You seem to have an Amish thing going on here. Well, she, the way she drew them. <laughs> he does, he does they, look like this. They all have beards. <laughs> I don't know what the beard thing is about. Uh, but this is his hallway, and the description for the artwork in the hallway was a strange bird... Uh, a dark, what was it? A dark sky, a sunless sky, and a deer, a deer in a field, I think it was. And with a disgusting woman. That's key here. That's key. Okay. So here is the artwork. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the weird bird, the dark sky. She put way more effort into the sky than I would have. And here's the deer. Here's the disgusting woman. And she is disgusting. She mentioned it three times. Just in case you didn't remember it the first time. Um, oh, here's a big one, okay? This is our uh, female protagonist. And uh, I noticed that uh, she forgot to mention... The, the author forgot to mention her big bazongas. So I took the liberty of asking my sketch artist here to add big old bazongas. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Check out this. How's your waifu uh, match up against this? All right? And she's got a fedora. She's an incel. All right. You like incel women? You got one. These are the pirates that were briefly introduced and we're probably never going to hear from again. But it said that their um, their pants were tattered. And so I told her to draw a dick because I would imagine that tattered pants would have a penis coming out. Uh, these are the pirates. This is canon, guys. This is canon. As you can see, there's a little dingle in there coming out. Uh, they were dressed in beads. Everybody is dressed in leather in the story. I don't know why. Everybody looks like Indiana Jones. Um, this is the the ship being chased by Zelna the witch, who has turned into uh, an elephant for some reason, going through the water. Which honestly, I didn't think that uh, elephants were that good in the ocean. But hey, you know, it's it's fantasy. And it said that uh, that she was chasing the ship's bowels. <laughs> Not the bow, guys. The bowels. The bowels of the ship. And as you can see, a, a, an authentic artist's rendition of the ship shitting into the ocean. Followed by the witch. The witch elephant. Okay, and then of course we've got the final one. Lotus laughing at uh, Augie's torn ass and his tidy whities coming out. And he's, he's not too happy about this one. Not happy at all. Not happy at all. So that's the art we have so far up to chapter two. Uh, if you're just tuning in, if you're a little late for this, I would suggest watching the stream from the beginning. I promise you will enjoy it. There's a lot of lore here. This is a terrible, terrible book by somebody that I know personally uh, that I've been following for a while. Uh, we looked at her artwork and we looked at her fan fiction in which she... I didn't look through the fan fiction too much. There's too much of it. There's too. I'll save that for another day. But she wrote a fan fiction of a Phantom of the Opera, where the Phantom took a shower in the 1800s uh, in a working shower, <laughs> scrubbed himself in a nice modern shower in the 1800s. And also, there was someone commenting about the fact that the they took a pregnancy test in the 1800s. Okay, <laughs> and there's apparently a lot of sex in these. I don't know why. I don't know why someone would want to fuck the Phantom, but hey, if that's what you like, who am I to say no? Oh, god damn. God damn. Yeah, it's, it's the crap ship. Uh, okay, guys. Let me, let me look through your responses here of what you thought. You are enthralled. Oh, don't worry. You could catch up on the beginning. I, I promise it's worthwhile. The first chapter is the one I remember the most. I've never read this book in its entirety because it's just that bad. Because there's just it's just that hard to get through. But uh, I remember the the first chapter I remember pretty well. So going through it again, I was just like I, I felt the same anger that I did the first time reading it. Ah, uh, it's pretty good. All right, so we're on chapter three now. Uh, the first and only story ever told. That's the name of the chapter. It's pretty good. Goddamn. The blind? You want me to sort that out for you? I got you, buddy. I got you. 
check this out. Live on stream. Oh, the paper towels are holding it up. Watch this. Live on stream. Live symmetry. Boom. What other streamer would do that for you? What other streamer would do that? You better subscribe for that one. You better subscribe or send me some bits right now. Someone sub this guy. Cliff, you better be subbed by the end of this story. Okay? Uh, Alright, chapter 3. The first and only story ever told. Okay. In the water wades a beautiful young girl with long, elegant, blonde hair and gorgeous blue eyes. If this is the same woman, she had brown hair before. I'm almost certain. Did, did she not have brown hair? The mother? No, the uh, the, 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 the big girl. Bosom woman? The big bosom woman. The, the fedora woman, yeah. Yeah. She had brown hair, right? Unless this is someone I else. This could be. Mom. I think she's his mom. Maybe. What, the woman? You think he wants to fuck his mother? <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. The I would love that. Time travel. That he's actually in the Ooh, past. It's a fan theory. They're traveling through time. She's, he's going to fuck his mother. Guys, this is a hot story. In nothing more than a white dress. Ooh, goddamn. I'm going to have to have you draw, uh, draw this. I'm going to save this one for myself. Uh, the water covers most of it as the waves sway back and forth. From far away, her name echoes in the wind from the voice of another young woman. Can we know her name? Before getting out of the water, she looked up at the sky, only to see the dark clouds forming above her head. A storm was coming in fast, and the only protection from the rain would be the thick treetops of her island. Here we go again. Same descriptions for the same fucking objects. You can't... You have no variety. Uh, after emerging from the water, the first rumble of thunder uh, occurred, followed by a flash of lightning. As the girl ran through the wooded island, the sight of her hut came into clear view. That'll protect you from the storm, giving her a sense of relief. After entering the grassy brown hut, oh, that'll protect you from the storm, baby. Absolutely, fucking lutely She grabbed the towel, to, <laughs> a towel from her hut, to wrap around her wet body when her mother, who was also in the hut, seemed to stop her. She's just watching her towel herself off. Uh, the mother was much uglier than the... Why is everyone ugly in the story? Everyone's fucking ugly, dude. Every single fucking person. Oh, Cliff, thank you for the two months, my man. Dude, I got you. I'll sort out any blind you want. I take care of my, uh, my viewers. Everyone is ugly in this fucking story. Ug the ugly girl and her uglier mother. This is driving me absolutely insane. She does not describe anyone any differently. They're either disgusting or ugly. That's it. That is it. Those are the only adjectives she has. <sighs> My god. The mother was much uglier than the girl. Not beautiful like her. So that doesn't say much. If she's beautiful and she's just uglier than her, she just doesn't look, good. It just doesn't look as good, right? It's not that much of, you know, she's just not as pretty as her, but she uses... You know, she's uglier than her. Much like a hag, the mother had gray, sh <laughs> gray short hair and pale, unhealthy skin, complete with haunting green eyes. What have I told you about waiting in that filthy ocean? She began. Mother, please, she begged. The ocean is such a beautiful thing, and when you're in it, everything that's on your mind just slips away with its tide. The mother snatched the towel from her daughter and threw it, threw her down onto her bed. Oh, baby. Semicolon. She was beautiful and skinny. Her mother is just a little uglier, that's all. It's no, no big deal, man. Not a big deal. She's got an ugly mom. Everyone does. You know what I'm saying? Disgusting brown fabric. <laughs> Everything, everything is brown. Everything is disgusting. Everything is strange. They got strange birds. They got fucking brown fabric. Ugly women. Ugly men. Oh, God. She threw her on the bed, which was nothing more than a few pillows draped in blankets. So she just has pillows on the ground and there's a blanket on it? That's the, that's the bed? Okay. With a flick of her finger, a fire sparked in the empty fire pit that was beside them. I guess I guess she does see everything as filth, which wouldn't surprise me because she's not very talented. So I guess she got her, you know, she, she probably got a, a decent amount of criticism. So she probably sees the world as not the greatest place to be. 
Uh, instead of wading in that filthy ocean, by the way, it's filthy, guys. That ocean is disgusting. Everyone pisses in there. She snarled. You should think about making your way over to the palace to make friends with the young prince, like I have told you to do time and time again. If he doesn't know you exist, then you, when he starts, starts the quest to choose a queen, he'll choose someone else besides you. The girl ignored her mother and kept her eyes on the roaring fireplace while her mother, her mother stood there twitching her finger around. This motion was causing a wooden spoon to magically mix whatever substance was inside the bowl she was holding. I'll be ruler of this island one way or another and with you in the palace. I'll be able to do it. Oh, no, never mind. This is the mother saying this. I'll be able to do it. I have powers given to me by the devil himself in exchange for the destruction of the island. And I will not lose them to someone as stupid as you not getting to know the prince. Wow. <laughs> she hates her daughter. Because she's uglier than the daughter. Did you know that? Yeah. Her mother was furious now as the girl just sat there listening to the storm that was occurring outside. These guys are so interesting. They're, they they don't watch television or listen to the radio. And they just listen to storms. Tomorrow you will go to the palace and you will introduce yourself to the young prince. That night, the girl lay in bed looking out the window. The window of the hut. <laughs> when she began to hear her name being called from outside. Winnie, the voice called, are you there? The girl who was named Winnie, <laughs> that's a good way to introduce the name, sat herself up from the blankets and looked across the dark room to see her mother, Zelna, fast asleep. Oh, we got some backstory, baby. Winnie quietly stood up and approached the window to see the young boy known as Sumble standing outside. He was holding a beautiful white flower in his hand and had, gold and had his golden lemur, Sparty, perched on his shoulder. <laughs> I know, right? Isn't it great? Sumbo, what are you doing here? You know if my mother sees you, she will most likely poison you. <laughs> I don't care, Winnie. Are you coming or not? This guy wants to get laid. Winnie gave her mother one last glance and climbed out the window to approach the waiting, the awaiting Sumbo and give him a kiss. Ever since she laid eyes on the boy who was standing with her now, she knew it was love at first sight. Her mother just couldn't see it. Her mother was more concerned with her marrying the prince, semicolon. Isn't Winnie a noise a horse makes? Yeah, but it's, you know, it's a name in this book, too. Pooh's a Winnie as well. Whew! It's Jim Beam, man. I guess to you after a while. Nazdrovia! Thank you so much, Rouse. Imagine me clinking glasses with you, my man. Goddamn. Picturing a small, shitty thatch hut with a hole. <laughs> Rain pouring in and them just sitting there listening, soaking wet. I know. How does this hut have a have a fucking window and there's just pillows on the ground covered in blankets? It makes no fucking sense. There's no care put into this story at all. So those poo bowels and semicolons and brown stuff. That's that's our author. That's our lovely author. You took a sip of wine with me? Hell yeah, dude. Here. This is me clinking the glass with you, Rouse. Nobody else look at this. This is me and Rouse. Ting. I'll, I'll give you the noise too. Here, com edit this and combine the noise with the with the camera shot. See? There you go. We did it. I don't know how I got this shot glass wet, but it's it's somehow covered in Jim Beam. It must have uh, it must have jumped out. When he gave her mother one last glance. Okay, we did that. Uh, marrying the prince, some someone that Winnie didn't care for at all. My God, whoo! Uh, you do know that my mother is trying to make me marry the prince of Rumbletwaza, right? Winnie questioned, sitting on the beach with her beloved Sumble. Sumble wrapped his arms around her and placed the white. He just, he just hugged her and placed the white flower into her blonde strands. She can't make you. No one can. We can always run away and be married tomorrow night, Winnie, in Vegas. Sparty, uh, who couldn't take being quiet any longer, jumped onto Winnie's shoulder and forced her to look at him. <laughs> just grabbed her face. Everyone's grabbing faces, just violating personal space. Just here, look at me. Of... What do we got here? It's funny that you say personal <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is, this is the king. <laughs> I love the way he looks. This is the king violating Augie's personal space. <laughs> This is really good. This is really good. Just grabbing his face. Okay, are you ready for this? It says personal space. Look at Augie's face. He looks like the Statue of Liberty. I fucking love this. This is the best drawing.
drawing of the night so far. This is him grabbing his face to look at him. I need to see the little bit of spit coming out of his <laughs> Oh my god, that's so good. Alright. Are you still up for drawing things? Yeah, Okay, fine. okay, let me think of something here. Okay, oh, I got it, I got it. Can you draw a hut oh, in a storm with a window... And you see the little witch and, and the daughter, and it's just pouring rain, and the place is falling apart. Okay. Okay. Uh. Isn't she talented? She can make things in a fucking instant. Oh, God. Let's see. I sat there listening to the story as the... Oh, 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 this is a story. I sat there listening to the story as the king told it to me, and everyone else in Rumbletwaza... Though I didn't understand where it was going, so I stopped him. Look, this is a nice story and all, but I don't get where it's all go- Why- Why are you saying something in the context of the story and then repeating it in dialogue form? I don't fucking understand why you would do this. Listen to the sentence! I sat there listening to the story as the king told it to me and everyone else. Though I didn't understand where it was going, so I stopped him. Look, this is a nice story and all, but I don't get where, get where it's going. Why? <laughs> listen, bitch king, I don't have time to listen to your BS story. What's the image on the right? This is fan art. for. This is actual art by the person who wrote this book. We haven't met these people. I don't know who they are, but she's wearing an upside down pineapple, and this guy's got a, a tattoo of a of a big dicked demon on his face. Okay, this is all in context. This is all canon. <sighs> I don't have any idea who Winnie or Sumble are. The king looked at me as if I had offended him greatly before Emily came forward and grabbed my shirt again with a grabbing of the shirt. It's really violent. I know. Everyone's just grabbing each other, invading personal space. What the fuck is this? Winnie and Sumble were your grandparents, Augie, she exclaimed. They left the island after that night so they could get away from Winnie's mother, Zelna. I paused after hearing that what em Emily had told me. If Winnie and Sumble were my grandparents, then what would, then that would make Zelna my great-grandmother. No, this couldn't be happening to me. Not now and in this ridiculous dream I was having. Oh, God, why does he keep... Mm. Dream? Monkey? <laughs> And repeating the thing that was just fucking told in the story. These are the recurring themes of this. This doesn't stop. It never ends. Emily pulled me closer to her and began to yell at me once again. I had to admit that her temper was pretty awful. But she was uh, still the most beautiful girl I'd ever laid my eyes on. Augie, are you listening to me? I said that Zelna is your great-grandmother. So what? Why am I like royalty to you then? Emily finally let go of me and walked back over to her father. I'll get back to that story. I'll, be I'll get back to the story now. Zum Zumble replied. Was his name Zumble? I thought it was Rumble. Did they say his name? I thought his name was like Rumble Twelve. Rumble Twelve. I thought his name was Rumble Twelve. <laughs> what the fuck is it? I don't think we ever said his name. Who is Zumble? I don't know. Who is Zumble? We never learned his name. I thought his name was Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. You see, after Sumble and Winnie left the island, they had your mother, Hannah, and got regular jobs like any other... <laughs> what the fuck is this? And got any other jobs like any other human being. When your grandparents became older, they decided that it was time to return to the island to show your mother her roots. What? They just they just came to Australia and started working at Tesco. Everybody, when they were, I don't know if Tesco is in Australia. This is the only reference I have for anything that's outside of the U.S. When they arrived back to Rumble Twaza, to their misfortune, they found out that Zelna was still alive and ageless. <laughs> I just found that out. Uh, she tried to finish what she had started with your grandmother by trying to force Hannah to marry me. To marry me, the the, the king. As protection, Winnie taught Hannah simple spells to keep Zelna away from her, but they were not enough to keep her away for good. Dot dot dot. Hannah, of course, fell in love with another one of our islanders. Semicolon. Morton. Morton, here's a who. 
They just got regular jobs. They started working at McDonald's. Like regular humans. Na zdrowie. I'm gonna hate Jim Beam by the end of this because I'm gonna associate it with this oh shitty God. story. That one? Yeah. Oh my. God. Because I knew I couldn't, I couldn't drink normal whiskey because I'd hate it. I don't want to hate whiskey. I love whiskey. I'll hate Jim Beam Apple. It'll be fine. I can live without that in my life. It'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> she was ageless. That's, that's such a great statement to me. Uh, let's see here. Morton, who was an adventurist. That was his that was his profession. He was an adventurist, guys. <sighs> With his help, they both began to search for something stronger to keep Zelna away and began to build their spell. They just build it. It's Magicka. Well, what happened, I asked. I was so anxious to find out what had happened between my parents and Zelna. You just fucking said that. You don't need to repeat this. I want to teach this woman how to write. And I don't think I'm that great of a writer. The king, however, continued with his story, dot, dot, dot. Hannah laid... <laughs> Listen to the sentence. Hannah laid baby Augie down in the driftwood cradle that was placed in their hut. It was late and she... Why did they just have driftwood? There's fucking... There's palm trees everywhere. You don't need driftwood. You can cut down a palm tree or even put it in, like, the palm leaves. That's a pretty, you know, a soft material to put a baby in. You don't need driftwood. That shit... That shit's disgusting. That shit hurts, too. Ugh. Uh, it was late and she had finally gotten Augie to fall asleep after rocking him in her arms for several minutes. A knock then occurred at her door, causing her husband, Morton, <laughs> to rise from where he was sitting and motion his wife to stay back from a knock at, the, at our hut door, huh? Uh, when he opened the door of their home, Zelna busted through and pushed Morton aside. She was dressed in all green, making her look like the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh. She didn't. She didn't wear green? She wore she black. Green. She was green and wore black. Uh -huh. It's like it's like it's like she she heard someone describe the movie. Yeah. Like she's like, okay, tell me like ten movies you know. Okay, uh, there's a wizard with glasses. There's a, a witch who's green. Uh, there's a guy with a whip who's dressed in all uh, leather. Uh, there's a movie with a blue woman. And also uh, a man who could control fire who has a scar on his face. Make a book out of this. And, and she did. She did. Uh, my god. She was dressed in all green. Uh, what do you want, Zelna? Asked Morton, standing in front of her to block any access. Well, she's, he's already behind her. She shoved him out of the way. Any access to his wife and child. Zelna pushed Morton aside once again and approached Hannah in order to glance down at Augie's infant, fo infant form. Ew! Ew! So, <laughs> dot, 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 a boy? Zelna stated, her disgusting lips curled I, over I, her I yellow... I bet anything, it, she's gonna try and kill him, and he doesn't die, and he has a scar, and he's the boy oh, who lived. Oh, he's the boy who lived. That would be I awesome. That would probably happen. Does he have any scars on him in the artwork? This is how much we pay attention. We don't even know. That's fine with me because the queen just had a baby girl. Morton shot up from where he was pushed again. This is the third time he's doing this. And grabbed onto Zelna, who immediately shot back with her powers, causing him to become pinned against the wall of their hut. Their, their sturdy hut. Uh, I tried to warn you to stay back. I am having a chat with my granddaughter, she replied, pointing her finger at Morton's paralyzed body. A chat that doesn't concern you. Hannah picked Augie up and held him close to her body. She was not about to let Zelna harm him, just as she had tried to harm her and her mother. I want you to leave and never come around me or my child again. You're never, ever... What is with the never, ever? Ne if you... Listen, let me give you a PSA to any writers out there. If you say never, ever in your writing, don't ever write again. Just stop. No one's going to read that. If you say never, ever. Never, ever getting into the uh, palace as long as I'm around. Really? Zilna laughed. Her evil voice echoing throughout the hut. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Oh, man. In this story, the scar is on his butt. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> that would be great. That would actually... I would appreciate that. If that just came around. 
She snapped her fingers and in an instant turned into a black hawk. Hey, hold on! Hold on! Did we not just establish that she can't turn into birds? Oh, I don't remember. She... I, know, I, I knew she could turn into an elephant. That was about it. She just said they could turn into any birds! And she turned into a fucking hawk! This is a chapter off. This was in the second chapter that this happened. I'm so mad. <laughs> well, let me ask you something again. Huh? What, what did you want them in the hut doing? Just talking. The witch and... The witch and, and the daughter, or the granddaughter. I don't remember who she was. But it's raining... And there's a big old hole in the hut because there's a window. <laughs> okay. In a hut. Okay. The witch learned the bird spell after the chase, but before the shower. Oh, okay, I'm I'm sorry. Dude. Not you. You have a better understanding of this book than I do. <sighs> I'm. I, I just like. How could you, if you have any, if you care anything about your story, anything like any semblance of continuity if you care anything about continuity how can you allow from one chapter to another the lore to be different if you've established a rule between a chapter not even like a couple okay i could understand maybe i could allow for her because she's a terrible writer okay shouts out to you between chapter two and chapter 10 forgetting about the bird thing but a chapter apart you already forgot she grinded off screen. This is the past. <laughs> this is the past. Oh my god. I, I just. Why am I caring about this? This doesn't matter. This, th th it doesn't. Oh, okay. She flapped her wing so she can fly, even though they said specifically she can't. She flapped her wings throughout the room and snatched Augie right out of Hannah's hand with her claws. With Augie dangling in her grasp, she flew herself right out of the open window and into the sky. Now, I'll tell you right now, I will give her credit if it turns out that she could turn into a bird now and they did something like cast a spell or some shit that she can't do it anymore. I will accept that and I will say kudos to you, okay? But she won't do that. I guarantee you she won't do that, okay? I... I... As a wager, I give you two shots. If she does that, I will take two full shots of this. That is how confident I am. I'm already like, I'm at least 20 shots into this shit. Not even half shots, they're full by now. Once Dylan was gone, the powers holding Morton against the wall wore off and he immediately ran over to the black trunk that was sitting up against the bed. From there, he took out his bow and arrow along with a medium-sized glowing stone. No, Morton, we can't do it. Not yet. The spell isn't right, and it surely won't work if we get rid of the stone now. Oh, God, they're going to they're gonna take away her bird powers, aren't they? I'm going to have to take two shots of Jim Beam. Cried Hannah, trying to seize the stone out of Morton's grasp. He placed the stone into a small leather sack and swung it over his shoulder before returning to face his wife. No, Hannah, we must do it now. That evil woman has her son. Even if the spell only lasts a few years, at least we'll have our son back, and then we can finish a new spell for when this year's uh, this one wears off. Before Hannah could answer Morton, he was out the door in a flash to find Zelda. As he ran through the pass of high grass, his golden lemur Marty, 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 Marty McFly, the lemur, Doc. You know it was a Crispin Glover little tidbit she wanted to throw in there because. She Okay. Just ask the mention Back to the Future. Let me give you a little backstory. <laughs> this this author is obsessed with Crispin Glover and Back to the Future. So she probably put Marty in here because of Back to the Future because Crispin Glover is in it. I bet you. It's gotta be. Sparty? Who, oh my god. Wait. Who is... I don't even know the continuity of this. I think Sparty was the lemur of her her father. I think. And I'm just saying I think because that's how little I'm, I'm paying attention. I think these are the, the, the kids of the people who were mentioned. We should make a flowchart of this. We should, we should make a timeline because it's that confusing. Sparty, a.k.a. Marty. Uh, 
Well, he's not he's not stumble or or, or stumble. Or I don't fucking remember what his name is. But this is uh this is Mort <laughs> Morton. <laughs> this is Martin, guys. I think I think this is the the son and daughter of the people that were mentioned before, which is it just, it just makes it more confusing. Oh, my God. Marty jumped down into his shoulder, onto his shoulder from the trees where he lived. Morton, where are you going? Zelna has my son in her grasp, and I'm going to get him back. Oh, God, are you ready? This is the hut. <laughs> this is them discussing things in the hut, okay? Fan art, official fan art. There you go. There's Zelna. Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut Twaza. <laughs> it's the Pizza Hut, guys. What is this on the back? What is this man? It's that it's What is that? What do you say? What is this? <laughs> I don't know. I must have done it it's, a long time ago. This is also official <laughs> fan art. I don't know who this is. That's old. <laughs> Are you taking a break from art? Uh, just got to walk a little That's bit. That's fine. That's fine. I don't want to wear you out. This is this is very. Don't wear me out. It's funny. <laughs> I just get my glasses down. Uh, that's what Morton looks like. <laughs> that's Morton's face. <laughs> Morton and his tongue. That's what he kissed her with to get her pregnant. Oh my God. Uh, Zelda has my son. She's probably flying him to Mount Rumbletwaza to drop him into the volcano. Marty glanced down at the glowing sack. Gl oh damn! He looked at his glowing sack. You're setting off the spell, too? It's the only way to save my son, Morton replied, his voice filled with such anxiety. That, that's officially what Morton looks like. That is canon now, okay? Once Morton made it to the bridge that would lead him to Mount Rumbletwaza, his pace quickened, especially once he saw Zelna's shadow fly over him. I thought she already got away. Uh, he looked up, and there was his son, wrapped with her claws as... Wrapped with her claws as she flew high above the trees. She could have just killed him. I mean, why does she have to toss him into the volcano? Shoot her, cried Marty, pointing at the sky. Just shoot her! Morton quickly took out his bow and arrow and aimed it towards the sky to await Zelna's shadow to pass him once more. As it did, she let uh, or he let the arrow loose and watched it as it shot through the sky and hit Zelna's right wing, causing a loud cry to, a loud cry to echo through the air and for her to uh, begin her plummet to the ground. You got her, cried Marty, jumping up and down on Morton's shoulder. This, however, did not stop Morton, for he continued running towards Mount Rumbletwaza to throw the glowing rock into the opening of the volcano. He made it to the beginning of the volcano and began his climb to the top when all of a sudden Morton felt something wrap. Oh, look at that. That's the, that's the baby. So that's the context for that picture. That's baby, baby Augie. Wrap around his foot. Without thinking, Morton glanced down at his foot, noticing that Zelna had transformed into a snake and was pulling him away from the volcano with her coils. How big is a snake? Shoot her! Uh, Marty acted quickly, took the rock from out of Morton's sack. Oh God, this sounds so sexual! And began to run up the mount, uh, to run up to the top of Mount Rumbletwaza. With the rock tightly in his paws, he was certain that Zelna would never catch up. Dot dot dot. Until she was right behind him, in f behind him in the form of a lemur. That dreaded Morton broke my wings. Dot dot dot. Zelna screeched with the creepiest sounding voice Morty had ever, or Morty Marty had ever heard. Morty. Morty! Zelda, Zelda's wings are broken, Morty! You gotta get her now! <laughs> You're next, and when I get my paws on you, I'm going to kill you, just like I did to the rest of your family. Morty picked up his pace and ran faster than he ever had before. Zelda was as quick as a lemur. Well, she was a fucking lemur! But Morty was quicker. Once he made it to the opening of the volcano, he turned around to see Zelda was standing right in front of him. It's colon, a semicolon, but no longer as a lemur. Damn, she transformed. That bitch transformed quick. Morty. I turned myself into a lemur, Morty. I'm lemur Zelma. Oh. Nazdrovia. Rouse Nazdrovia, my man. Ah. <sighs> This time she was in the form of a big lizard. Jeez, Marty laughed. You're ugly. Anyone surprised by that description? And now I'm going to finish you off, she barked, licking her lips with her long red lizard tongue. Ooh, it's 
pretty pretty sexy right here. Marty laughed at her proclamation before throwing the rock into the volcano, and within seconds, a loud thunderous noise shook the ground. Uh, from behind him, hot red air blew out of the stack of Mount Rumbletwaza surrounding the whole island. Then before Marty's eyes, Zelda's body began to disintegrate like sand as she screamed and blew away with the wind. So she she died? When Zelda was gone, the red atmosphere disappeared, leaving the island just as it used to be, only without Zelda. When the king had stopped telling his story, I looked at him once again, waiting... The, 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 the change from third to first person does not work very well here. Waiting for the happy ending that never came. So then what happened, I asked, my voice filled with such excitement. I couldn't help but want to know what happened next. Even though this was just a big made-up big made up dream. This is a dream. This is a nightmare. Monkey instead of lemur. That I was sure to wake up from at any given moment. I was so eager to hear about my parents. Uh, the king looked away, his facial expression filled with such grief as he, he took a breath to continue with the next part of the story. The spell had worked and had made Zelna disappear, but it couldn't bring back your parents, Zumbul stated. W what happened to the parents? Marty found you in the woods, fast asleep as if nothing had happened, with your father's dead body lying- WHY IS HE DEAD?! THAT DOESN'T MAKE ANY FUCKING SENSE! WHY IS HE DEAD?! Marty uh, took you back to your hut, only to find Zelna had killed your mother too- WHEN?! WHEN?! She died! When? When did this happen? You want a drawing of Zelna with her long lizard tongue and disgusting lizard bobs? <laughs> you have an art request, are you up for it? <laughs> what? Someone, uh, someone wants you to draw Zelna with her long lizard tongue and disgusting lizard bobs. Because she turned herself into a lizard. I TURN MYSELF INTO A LIZARD, MORTY! Uh, when he brought you to me, I knew in my heart that I couldn't raise you. And with your grandparents being dead, you had no one. Why, why couldn't you raise him? You had a daughter, right? Orphaned by the main villain who is back to kill him. Augie really is Harry Potter. It's true! He draws so many parallels. How did everyone die? It doesn't make any sense. She was killed. <sighs> I sat there stumped as to how I hadn't known that I was carried to a volcano in the clutches of a hawk. <laughs> uh, how had I stayed asleep the whole time? How could I have not recognized any- Well, you were a fucking baby, dude. I don't think you would- I don't think you would recognize that. The, the earliest memory I have was when I was three years old. How could I not have recognized anyone from the island when I lived there for most of my infant life? Uh, Zelna, my great-grandmother, had killed my parents, semicolon. Oh, fuck me. Not another one. I'm so sick of drinking this. She turned into a reptile? She turned into a lizard. And she had a disgusting lizard tongue. But you, you have to dr draw her lizard bobs, too. Hey, I have to appease the audience with your talent. You know what I mean? This is how I, this is how I, pull, this is how I support this family. Yes, my love. That's how I support everybody here. Subscribe, everybody. This is primo content. Um, let's see. With your grandparents that you had no one. Uh, the people who were only trying to save me and the island. Zumble looked at me once more as I waited for him to end the story, but sadly enough, he couldn't finish it. Instead, I watched as Emily comforted her father by finishing it for him. My father sent you back to Sydney, where he knew you would be safe and grow up like a regular human being. But the spell didn't work, I cried out, cutting into Emily's story. No, she began. It worked, but your parents didn't have the spell finished, so it only kept her away for th for 35 years? He's 35 years old? He's 35 years old? What? Uh, instead of an attorney, and it was it, it's wearing off quickly, <laughs> so it doesn't even work for the 35 years, I guess. I, be, I began to wonder uh, why I had, I had been brought to this island in the first place. After hearing about my parents and Zelna, I just could not get the thought of why out of my head. Okay, then why have you brought me here? What do you want from me? Emily paused before saying the very words I had been dreading. You're the only one who can help us, Augie. Her voice became gentler as she continued to point 
continued what continued to the point of her sentence we need to make uh we need you to make up a spell that will re relieve us from zelda for good i had to admit that i was actually enjoying the story about my parents until i heard emily say those dreaded words how how was i supposed to help her yes my mother knew some sort of magic but how was that helping me how was that helping me this is just god damn man he's, he's just fixated on himself yeah, 35 years young, working a job that he hates, being afraid of the world, he's he's done great. 35 years, everybody. He should have just stayed on the island, he would have done better. 35 more. Yep, absolutely. 35 years, 35 more, baby. God, live long and prosper. I was not only afraid of everything, but I knew nothing. She, she keeps bringing this up, but it just doesn't, It, it it's never used. It never comes to fruition. But I knew nothing other than how to process paperwork. I couldn't take standing there anymore like some sort of hero. And so I did the only thing I knew how to do, which was run. He just ran away from all these people. I didn't care what they thought of me. Not now and not anymore. Okay. I was not a hero, semicolon. I was just a man from Sydney whose parents just happened to be heroes. They just happened to be heroes, guys. I'm not a hero. My parents just happen to be heroes, Morty. Ah, oh. yeah, he is a late bloomer. 35, 35 years of blooming, and he still hasn't bloomed. Uh, as I ran down the sandy path of the island, leaves from tall plants hit me in the face, but I didn't care. The king didn't care about me when I was a baby, and so I wasn't going to care now. I didn't even make it a mile into the forest when I heard Emily's sweet voice calling out my name, semicolon. Another fucking semicolon already! I don't want to drink this anymore! Oh, that's a big one. Ugh. Whew. I'll leave the other half for later. I'll just have it ready. Another fucking semicolon, dude. Between paragraphs. Uh, hers and the childish voice that belonged to the annoying Lotus. He still hates this lemur. I kept running, eventually ending up at the spring that was surrounded by long tree vines that dangled in front of my face. I immediately stopped running and slowly walked past them, cautiously pushing the vines aside. I knew I should have turned around and walked the other way, because after moving a few of the vines, Lotus popped down in front of my face, clinging tightly to, to one of them. He's just from, everyone's in front of their faces. Where are you going, Loki? I didn't bother answering him and pushed the vine he was clung to aside, causing him to lose his balance and fall to the ground with a loud thud. However, did that force, did that, what? Did that force him to give up? Of course not, semicolon. God damn, I knew I'd need this. Of course not, semicolon. Uh, within seconds, he was on my shoulder, tugging at my shirt to get me to stop walking. I thought I said stop wanking for some reason. You can't leave! Lotus's furry paws clung to my shoulder. We need you! You do not need me, I said, glancing at his childish, furry face. Figure out your own spell to keep Zelna away. When I looked back at where uh, I was walking once more, Emily was standing in front of me, blocking my path. It was as if she had appeared out of nowhere, but one thing was certain, she was angry. We can't figure out our own spell, because your mother was the only one who knew the exact spell that would keep Zelna away for good. But you know, I haven't got a clue either, I said. I was curious as to why she was. She had suspected that I had known the spell. Oh god, excuse me. If anyone should have known it, it should have been her. You've lived on this island your whole life, so you should know it. Me, I'm going back home to Sydney where I belong. I took Lotus off my shoulder and handed him back to Emily. All right, we got the artwork, everybody. Oh, oh wow, this is this is hot. <laughs> That's Zelda's disgusting lizard tongue and her big lizard bobs, everybody. Very hot. Very cool. Very cool. Oh baby, I like her little elf ears too. <laughs> she was transforming. <laughs> She's now retiring from artwork. She's she's done her fill. Everybody, please give her a round of applause to the artist as she escapes from this hell that I'm still trapped in. Uh, let's see. I took Lotus from uh, before beginning to walk off once more. You know what? Fine. I heard her reply with a bit of sarcasm, and of course, she loves the word sarcasm. 
but you have to take a Lotus with you. I stopped dead right there and and right then and there and look, uh, turned around to face Emily once again. First, she brings me to the island and tells me that I have to make a spell to keep Zelna away. And now she was going to let me go, but with a price. There was no way I was taking that ball of fur back to Sydney with me. He would not only destroy my apartment, but also have me committed to the loony bin once people would see me talking to a monkey. Guys, he's a monkey. Do you get the joke? He's a monkey. My God. No, Emily, I will not be taking home a pet. I watched as Lois jumped from Emily's grasp, grabbed my shirt like some sort of rabbit animal, and began tugging it back and forth. I, he stated, am not a pet! Marty was my father, and he served your father, and his father served your grandfather, and now I must serve you. That's a good sentence. I picked Lois up by the red vest he was wearing and laughed. Serve me? You do not serve me. If anything, you annoy me. Emily came forward, took Lotus out of my grasp, and sat him back on my shoulder. Just grabbed him, put him on the shoulder. Uh, Lotus is your lemur, and he goes anywhere you go. So you either stay here and help us, or you take him back to Sydney with you. My choice was obvious after hearing Emily say those few words. Serve me? That horrible little monkey was to serve me? How? How could an annoying little vermin like him uh, serve someone like me? I wasn't sure and wasn't looking forward to finding out. But staying on the island was uh, on the island was surely a uh, surly actually she wrote surly the better choice rather than taking him home with me. Oh my God, translate this story into Polish. My God, my God, the undertaking that that would be. I could never. I I I, I can't. I can't do that to the Polish people. I I just can't do it. After forcing myself to stay, Emily had met, how much how much fucking longer is this chapter? My lord, this just keeps going, man. Let's see. All right, it's not that much longer. I think we'll finish this chapter and then that'll be the end of part one of this reading stream. Uh, after forcing myself to stay, Emily had motioned uh, me to follow her back to where I had run from. It was beginning to get dark out, and I knew the island surely. Now she spell spelled it surely, so she spelled she says surely sometimes and then surely. No, this is chapter 3. We've, we've passed chapter 2. Surely it wasn't safe at night. Once the sun had begun to set, I could feel my nerves beginning to tremble. It wasn't that dark. It wasn't the dark that had scared me, but the strange creatures that lived on the island. If talking monkeys and evil witches... My fucking God. Yes? Sure. Sure. Returning to the story, everybody. Your Brazilian? Oh, welcome. I love Brazilians. Uh, oh my god, where did I leave off? All I could think about was when I walked beside Emily were huge snakes ten times the size. Why is everything ten times the size of everything? Uh, the ones back home that thought of... Oh my fucking god. Huge snakes ten times the size of the ones back home and then thought of ten foot high koala bears with dripping fangs. Oh, you need something? Oh, okay. My imagination stopped wandering once uh, we made it to the bamboo gates of a huge palace, which was guarded by the tall trees. Were they ten foot, uh, ten foot taller than the, the, other, the other trees? I had never seen a palace up close before, especially one that was made out of drift. What's with the driftwood everywhere? There's fucking palm trees everywhere. Just use the palm trees. Don't use the driftwood. We passed the guards who were standing at the gates with sharp harpoons in their hands and proceeded to the front door. Is this where you live? I asked, staring at its beauty. Emily turned right around to me and crossed her arms as if I had said something offensive. Here we go again. Yes, Augie, she groaned. This is where I live. I am a princess, so why wouldn't I live here? You seriously need to stop asking so many questions. Don't Stop asking questions about this place that shouldn't exist. When she turned around to continue walking on once more, I squeezed my fists in anger. Mm, oh, this bitch! I understand that sometimes I ask some of the dumbest things, but she didn't have to treat me like a child. When the doors to the palace opened... I continued to follow her down the long hallway that had walls covered in crystal-like seashells. I wanted to tell Emily how beautiful they were, but decided that it was best not to say another word. Hold on one sec. Oh, let me close this door. Oh, bye, Tomo. The boy has escaped. Uh, 
I had to admit that the king had a lot of Rommel Twajans working for him, because no matter what hallway we turned down, it was never empty. Some were cleaning up, others were carrying entrees of food, and some were just standing guard. We approached a double door that was made out of bark of a palm tree. So now we've got, we finally got the palm tree used. Everything else is driftwood. And I reached out for the seashell knob. <laughs> seashell! I was just going to stab yourself when Emily grabbed my hand. No, Emily whispered. Before we go in, let me make it clear to you that this is the dining room. You mustn't eat anything until my father tells us to do so. When we enter, you will sit beside me and keep your hands on your lap until further instruction. I nodded and pulled away from her grasp as she turned back towards the door and opened it. I followed her... Uh, as we entered the dining area, which was another beautiful room in the palace. The walls were covered in starfish, and the table was a large overturned fishing boat. <laughs> what a shithole. Uh, no one was seated at the table, and I proceeded to do as I was told and dashed for the large driftwood seat at the end. I didn't even get to touch the chair when Emily pulled me away from it. What? I asked. I was just taking my seat like you told me to do. Emily threw me in a chair that was all the way down at the other. She just tossed him to the other side of the room. Uh, took her seat, uh, from the other end where I was originally going to sit and took her seat across from me. I guess she wanted to keep her eyes on me to make sure that I wouldn't cause her any further embarrassment. I didn't think there was anything wrong with a seat I chose, I replied. That, she started, pointing to the chair that was at the end of the table, is my father's seat. No one sits in the chair but him, which is why you're sitting there. Okay. I didn't make another attempt to embarrass her and just uh, sat there quietly looking down at my empty plate. It was then that the place uh, that the second most horrible event of the day took place. As I saw the chair beside me being pulled out, I glanced at it, instantly spinning Lotus hopping onto his cushion. Oh no, you're not sitting next to me. I grabbed onto Lotus's vest. To pull <laughs> it just keeps grabbing this poor animal, just tossing him around, tossing him out windows, just manhandling a, a little lemur. Uh, I grabbed onto Lotus's vest to pull him away from the chair. Animals belong outside, not in the kitchen. Put him down, Augie. Emily reached out to snatch Lotus from my grab. They're just both tugging at the animal at this point. Uh, that has been his chair since the day he came to live in this palace. Once Lotus was in his seat, he took his napkin and threw it at my head in anger. Animal, I mean, I'm beginning to think that you uh, have short-term memory loss, Augie. Once again, I'm not an animal, a pet, or a monkey. I'm a golden rodicus lemur. That's not an animal. Okay. That is not an animal at all. My god, this 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 will never end. So you're telling me that it's okay for animals to eat at the table? I asked, glaring over at Emily. One word out of you, Augie, and I'll make you sleep outside tonight. Emily spat, staring at me. She just spat on him. Uh, at me, as if I had done something wrong. I began to think that it was possible that... I, th I think Augie might have a little... He might be on the spectrum a little bit. He doesn't think he does anything wrong, ever. He He doesn't do anything. He doesn't find any enjoyment. Although maybe you know, maybe he has like a train hobby or something. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I would want to learn more about Augie. I began to think that it was possible that Emily really disliked. Me. <laughs> I just I just started to think that for some reason. Then again, I had to take into account that Emily never really seemed to like a happy person to begin with. When the doors to the dining room opened once again, I looked up to see Zumble entering alone. Emily and Lotus immediately rose to their feet, and when I didn't do the same, she kicked the table to motion she just kicked the table. To motion me to rise as well. When I did, Zumble took his place at the end of the table and calmly raised his hands into the air to let us know that we could take our seats. It has been many moons since the last time we had a visitor for dinner, he asked he said. I looked around the table, immediately taking notice that someone was missing. We had Zumble, Emily, and unfortunately Lotus, but I couldn't figure out where the queen was. This was a kingdom, after all, and there had to be a queen around somewhere. Zumble, where is the queen? Emily's eyes immediately darted at me after hearing what I had said. Augie, that is not, a, that is not of your concern. Wait, my daughter. <laughs> this is how a king speaks to his daughter. Wait, my daughter, Zumble interrupted, cutting Emily's anger short. Augie has asked a question and deserves an answer. I glanced over at Zumble, awaiting the answer that Emily obviously didn't want me to know. Just recently, your mother's spell has been wearing off quickly. We found this out because a few months ago, Zelna somehow got onto the island and into the palace. She killed all the guards and then got to my wife before the spell pulled her out of the island. She had only been here 20 minutes and the casualties were as if she had been here for an entire day. Zumble lowered his head in sorrow. Oh man, the spell is weakening. We cannot afford to have her on the island, even if it's for only five minutes. I don't know how many more days the spell is going to last, but without your help, our island will surely perish. There was an awkward silence in the room. 
before Zumble snapped out of his sorrow and smiled at me once again. Enough about Zelna. Let's eat, he said, uh, motioning the cooks to bring the food in from the kitchen. I was so relieved to hear the exact words come from Zumble's mouth because, in truth, I was famished. You know, talking about all that death just makes you so hungry. The last thing I could remember eating was my ham sandwich days ago before I was kidnapped by Loza. Well, that's untrue because he did eat a turkey sandwich just yesterday. Okay. More problems with the continuity. Uh, when my empty plate was lifted from under me, my mouth began to water as I thought about the image of hot roast ooh, and mashed potatoes being set in front of me. It wasn't until the plate was set back in front of me once again that my watery mouth ran dry. Placed in front of me, oh, we're going to have some disgusting food, I can tell. Placed in front of me were not mashed potatoes or even a roast, nor was it pasta or even vegetables. There placed in front of me was a plate full of something that could only be described as roadkill. Whatever it was, it looked as if it had been hit and run over double the times it should have been. It was black, thick, and squishy. Oh, baby. Something that it definitely did not belong on your plate. I looked around only to notice that everyone was eating it as if it were the most delicious thing in the world. As I glanced at Lotus, I noticed that he was gulping it down faster than Emily or Zumble put together. A lemur. A lemur eating meat. It's fine. Some ugly, disgusting food. That's the, that's the perfect description. That's what it looks like. Lotus, I mumbled, trying not to get on everyone, not trying not to get everyone else's attention. What? He asked, continuing to swallow his food. Can you see that I'm eating? What exactly is on the plate? Coco, Coco koala. He replied. Lotus, I neither see Coco or koala. I only see roadkill. What is roadkill? He curiously asked. He curiously asked. My God, I'm falling apart. What what is Coco koala? I mocked. Lewis ate another mouthful of his dinner and turned to face me once again. Coco koala is an animal that lives on the island. It's our specialty and favorite thing to eat. Something wrong with your dinner, Augie? Asked Emily, cutting into Lotus's conversation. Th these people really are fucking savages. Goddamn. I glanced up at her and shook my head as I quickly shoved the bit of the co a bit of the Coco koala into my mouth. As I chewed it up, I had to admit that it wasn't half bad. And then again, it wasn't half good either. Oh, a little wit there. After shoving the remainder of it into my mouth, <laughs> ooh, goddamn, I was relieved to find that dinner was finally over. After saying goodbye to Zumble, I followed Emily and Lois out of the di dining room and to wherever it was she was taking me now. After walking back down the dark hallway, we came to a staircase that was made out of the backbone of a whale. <laughs> oh my god. And began to climb the ver to the very top of it. When we got to the closed door, Emily opened it and we stepped into an area that turned out to be a bedroom. Oh. God damn. This, Emily replied, lighting a candle, will be where you will sleep. I suggest that you get your rest because tomorrow will be a long, tiring day. Thank you, Emily, I said, offering her my hand. Okay. Just when I thought she was going to accept my offer, she immediately grabbed my shirt. Here we go again. And brought me closer to her face. It just, just, everybody just, just like, look at me. Look at me. Uh, thank you by not stepping foot out of this room until I come and get you tomorrow. When Emily pushed me away from her, I was left alone with Lotus. I glanced around the room and noticed vines hanging from the ceiling and a view of a whole island from out the window. Why are there vines hanging from the ceiling, Lotus? I questioned, touching one of them with my index finger. Lotus swung onto one and I was touching and climbing onto the others. And, and one I was touching and climbed to the others that were hanging a bit higher. Maybe, he began, because this is my room and I agreed to share it with you. I walked over to the bed that was in the corner of the room and lay down. This had been the most eventful day by far, and I didn't want to think about what tomorrow would bring. After lying there a bit longer, I began to drift off to sleep, hoping that when I awoke, I would I would be back in Sydney and in my own bed. The next chapter is called The Monster of Tower 2. Goddamn. Let me read some of these chapters. We're about, we're almost, ooh, excuse me, we're almost halfway through this book. You got the, mouse, the Monster of Tower 2, Rough Waters, it had two blizzard lizard heads. The Inconvenient Truth, isn't that a movie? As Good as Dead, isn't that a movie about global warming? Uh, Into the Wild, The Dragon's Keep, The Rich's Brew, and Celebration. Wow. Al Gore's movie, that's right. An Inconvenient Truth. I forgot about that. Uh, okay, so that's that's four... No, well, three. Three chapters of uh, The Escapades of Augie Atwell. Also, this is the back of the book. I don't think I showed this on stream. Uh, you can't really see it. It's pretty glossy. 
Uh, meet Romaltoise's newest hero, Augie Atwell. The village of Romaltoise is in danger, and the only one who can save it is Augie Atwell. With a little faith, <laughs> uh, the help of a princess and an odd trekker, what? And a talking lemur named Lotus, Augie will come face to face with creatures always believed to be fictional. Blizzard lizards, talking sharks, the fire-breathing dragons, and Zelna, the witch that Augie must stop in order to save Romaltoise and his people. This is like pretty much an aerial font. Like, 18-point aerial font. Just on the back. It has, like, no no thought put into it or anything. Oh, my God. I know. I can't... F I, I think we've established if he's autistic or not. I think I think we know. He, he has no fucking self-awareness or anything. Oh, that was quite a trick, everybody. Look how much Jim Beam I have after all those semicolons. Hardly anything. We started with a full bottle. We've got about... A quarter of a bottle left. It's pretty good. Uh, I'll cut it here. I think I'll I'll stream sometime this week. I don't think I'll be able to stream tomorrow. I have a late client, but uh, I had a lot of fun reading this to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. This is a little a little different from uh, you know what I usually do, but I will read more of this at some point. I had fun. I hope you guys did too. It was pretty good. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you for, for hanging with me. Thank you for enjoying the art. Um, it's a good time. I'm glad that I was able to share this with, with somebody else. <laughs> this is such like an an inside joke for so many years. It's it's nice to, to share it with other people and for them to be able to enjoy it as well. Uh, you have no idea how long I've been I've been trying to read this fucking book. Oh man, it is it is an ordeal, isn't it? You see how how why it took so long for me to read, and now I have to make you suffer through it. I'm so sorry. I feel so bad. But thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. It's it's been a good time. I'll be back either tomorrow or sometime this coming week. Like I said in the beginning of the stream, I'm gonna be streaming a little less because I'm working on things and I'm and I'm working a lot. So. Don't worry, I'll bring you good content like this. I was going to save this for, for Snoozy TV, but I figured it would be more fun to to bring it just out of nowhere, just to kind of gauge your reaction to this kind of content. All right. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Who who shot in the story? So, someone shot. Oh, that's right, the uh, Morton. This is, this is Morton shooting at Zelna. Ready? Boom. But he died. And so does his wife. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for, for watching and stopping by. See you later. <laughs>